Sills! Welcome to this Football Friday. Fantastic. Last night was the start of week four. Um, I believe the Lions made a statement last night. Look, Niners, Eagles, Cowboys, Lions. If, if, if you're looking for Johnny Walker and you're looking for like the blue label, that's on the top shelf. If you're looking for black and red, it's on the second shelf. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like, you know, that's the second shelf down there. So, but but they're moving up. You see what they're doing. They're moving up. Okay. Hey, I have to drop this science on you. Tone, everyone, this is going to be the craziest thing you've ever heard in your life. So obviously today, like... After 27 years, there's a dude that was arrested. And I lived in Vegas at the time. And you know I'm friends with the mayor, Carly Goodman. She's been on the program, right? So I've been kind of like going back and forth with the sheriff's department. And um, Keith D was arrested. Do you want to hear the craziest story of all time? Tone, this is, I don't know if anyone has reported this yet, but on a recruiting trip that Najee Harris took to UCLA when Jim Moore Jr. was the head coach, this is years ago, Jim Moore told Najee Harris um, that Keith D killed Tupac. And he told it to Rob Cassidy today from Yahoo Sports. The story. He goes, Jim Moore Jr. told me this story when I was on a recruiting trip to UCLA. <laughs> I'm like, come again? And so they've kind of known who this dude is. And, and Najee Harris dropped this bomb today. He's like, yeah, I was on a recruiting trip. And Jim Moore Jr., who then was the head coach at UCLA, told me that Keith D. killed Tupac and shot Suge Knight in the car. <laughs> I'm like, what? Holy cow, man. I'm like, and you guys know I know Suge just because he was a football player and I knew his coach who was the head coach of the Running Rebels back in the day. I, did, I used to do a radio show with Harvey Hyde. Harvey Hyde is the guy that named Suge Knight because he used to call him Sugar Bear. That was his full nickname was Sugar Bear. So I, I knew Shug. Dude, crazy. Jim Moore Jr. knew like 10 years, 15 years ago that Keith D shot and killed Tupac Shakur. 27 years later, maybe some justice, man. That was a big deal because it was right after a Tyson fight my wife and I went to. We were in the hotel that night. When those guys were all in there, it was crazy scene, man. Crazy scene. Anyway, so pop culture news right out of the gate, man. Unbelievable. I mean, okay, we move on here. Hey, by the way, bottom of the hour, Mike Gullick will join us. The legendary eagle and broadcaster himself, Mike Gullick, will join us at 3.30 Eastern time. At 5.30, Philly Godfather, as he always does on this Friday and every Friday, 5.30 Eastern time. So today, Mike Gullick at 3.30, Philly Godfather at 5.30. So we get our friend Mike Gullick on. By the way, I also want to start the program out before we get into the topics here. Um, this is a great chance, your last chance of the week for you to qualify for our Hooters gift certificates. My guy Tone has been throwing out a code word throughout the three hours. All you have to do is identify that code word and you send us your information. You email it to us. All this info right here to Dan Cilio Show at Gmail. And on a football Monday, you could possibly be our next group of winners. And you win yourself merchandise and you also win yourself an opportunity to get those gift certificates. And we'll name the winners. That will be on Monday. 
like Egardo and Patrick, maybe you could be part of that group too. So we look forward to you guys filling that out for the final day of the week as we have a football Monday. We'll name our new names. So Mike Gullick, I'm looking forward to talking to him. I want to ask him about the brotherly shove. I'm not naming it that other thing. <laughs> I, I'm off it, man. It's absolutely too weak. Okay. So we're going to get into Commanders and Eagles. Is this the game that hurts in the offense get back on track again? Is this the game that the offense clicks and gets back on? Hey, get this. You know, I think maybe what I should do from now on is underline why. See, this is a marathon, not a sprint, and I know. But because I'm on Monday through Friday, I talk in the sprint. Do you understand that? Anybody who does a show, radio show, TV show, what have you, and he does one Monday through Friday, everybody who has any kind of common sense, and, and that's why some of you go like this, Sills, it's a marathon. It's early. I know, but when you're a sports talk host, you talk in the micro because this is what we do. We talk about now. If that's the case, I should just come on at the end of every month and only do it once a month. You understand, right? Use some common sense here in how we present this stuff. It's not about not understanding that, that there's a long way to go. But that's not what I do. I'm on right now. Today. Okay? Everybody understands that this is a this is a marathon. Nobody 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 doesn't know that better than me. I played it. I understand it. But you also have to do this. And this is why I say this. Do you actually really think that I'm looking at the Philadelphia Eagles playing against the Minnesota Vikings or the New England Patriots or what they did against the Buccaneers? Isn't this more about winning a Super Bowl? Is it more really to you guys about being three? I see you guys bring up three and oh. Is that what you're really looking at? I'm looking at a Super Bowl. So when I see a team right now and how I look at the Eagles, I don't see a Super Bowl team. Not yet. I don't see a Super Bowl team right now. I don't. You, you can have your fantasy rubbing of the genie lamp and all that stuff. Right. Congratulations, you're 3-0. and Last year you were 3-0 and and it didn't mean shit. Great. This is a, hey, I love it. You see this? Hollywood, Joe, you were 3-0 and last year. Didn't mean shit. Meant nothing. Meant nothing. Being 3-0 and right now, you don't want to obviously be 0-3 or even 1-2. and two. Congratulations for doing your job. Congratulations for doing your job. Beating lesser teams. There, is that what you want? Congratulations for beating lesser teams. Oh, I think the 49ers and the Dolphins and maybe those two teams. I think those two teams look like Super Bowl teams. Maybe Buffalo. Maybe Buffalo, too, looks like a Super Bowl team. All right. Commanders, stats don't get you to a Super Bowl. Wins do. I know Garoppolo will tell you the same thing, LJ. So will Kaepernick. Congratulations. Yeah, you're right. Kaepernick and Garoppolo know that too. Oh, yeah, and Jalen. Pretty cool that he's in that group. Jalen Hurts, Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, guys that lost. And Kali Kaepernick. Jalen's better than those guys, though, right? Okay, I agree. <laughs> oh, I agree. 
Commanders Eagles. Here we go. Commanders two and one heading into this game versus the Eagles. Last week, the Commanders, in my opinion, were absolutely thrashed by the Bills. 37-3. How was 19 to 29, 170, QBR 41-5, threw four picks in the game. By the way, that's one more than Hertz has on the season. But these happened in one ball game. Um, the Commanders gave up 168 yards rushing to a football team that doesn't really have a running back on 33 carries. And at a 5-1 clip, if I'm Washington and Buffalo, Buffalo ran the ball on you at a 5-1 qu- Five one clip with 33 attempts for almost 170 yards. Houston, we have a problem here heading into this ball game. Your run defense versus a team that knows what they're doing when it comes to running the ball. If I'm Philadelphia, I'm going to test you out right away on that one because I'm better than Buffalo. I'm better than Buffalo. Buffalo did some great coaching last week with Josh Allen. They didn't have they didn't go against the grain where a lot of coordinators go against the grain. They were smart. Commanders allowed 20 completions on only 32 attempts for 218. When 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 you're allowing 20 completions and you're moving the chains, and you're running the ball at 5-1 a clip, what does that tell you? Here, I'll help most of you because you don't know what you're listening to when I say this because some of you can't follow along. That means you're in third and two, third and three, third and one, the majority of the game, which means what? Your percentage of making first downs is off the charts, and that's what happened in that commander game. They controlled that football game because of field position and the way they were running the ball, not the way they were throwing the ball. I mean, 20 completions, and you have 178 yards rushing on 33 attempts, and you had 5-1 a clip? Game. 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 You're, you're, you're not stopping that. Buffalo looks outstanding right now on both sides of the football. They look great. That's a good-looking football. You're not playing better football than the Buffalo Bills. Don't kid yourselves. You're not. The Washington rush defense. 13 attempts, 105. Why'd they quit? Why did they quit running the ball against Buffalo? I mean, you're, you're almost at, I mean, you're almost at eight yards a clip. Why would you stop rushing the ball like that? Is that Eric enemy? So you had 105, think about it, 105 rushing yards on 13 attempts, and you stopped? You were having success. Why did you stop? Eagles are seventh in scoring. 23rd in passing. 198-7. Here's something else to keep an eye on in this ball game. The Eagles have been atrocious when it comes to penalties. 15 penalties, they're 28th in the NFL. Undisciplined football. Not me saying it. Your actions speak to it. They're 28th in penalties. What does that mean? Undisciplined football. Okay? 28th. That means you keep teams in games. Okay? You keep teams in games. Mask, I thought Cowgirls were the best team in the league. Let me get back to something that's more meaningful. Got to play better discipline. To me, 
in this ball game here, this is a 31-17 game. Okay? Unless you get out coached. And you've been out coached two of the three games that you've been in. And they have a better coaching staff than you. They proved it last year by beating you at full strength. And you can dissect that loss all you want. When you make the mistakes, that's a you thing, not a Washington commander thing. Those are excuses. It, 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 it turns my stomach when I hear people coming up with excuses why Philly lost that game. The 49ers beat the Rams, Rams and Giants. Can you can you put that back up there for me? Because um, he 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 did throw the dough up there and 49ers beat the thank you tone Steelers, Rams, Giants, the Eagles beat the Patriots, Vikings, Bucks, who you call the Super Bowl defense. Lesser teams, um, not one of the teams the um, Eagles have played will make the playoffs. 49ers, the steel the 49ers in my opinion. We'll we'll get to that later again. I'm off track here. Um, unless you get out coached, this is a coaching game. This is a 31-17 Philadelphia Eagle game. Everything that you do and do well, they don't. You know, somebody told me they had a good front four. They do, but you can't. The Buffalo Bills ran you over. No excuses for Washington to have that kind of talent and equity in that defensive line and get killed by Buffalo. I couldn't even tell you who their running backs are. I know Allen's the threat, but who, who, who ran the ball? He didn't. Stupidity coaching. You gave up in the run game. I mean, why would you, when you're averaging eight yards of carry, stop running the ball on Buffalo? You panicked. They panicked in that game. I'm talking Washington. I see a 28-20 ball game here. That's where I go. I see a 28-20 game because I'm not sold on your coaching, especially your offensive coordinator. And Michigan fan from Colorado, Ohio, checking in, tuning Every day, keep it fair for most of the part. Be catching you on Twitter. Thank you very much, Ken. I appreciate you doing that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Somebody I see goes no way. Did you think last year you'd get beat by the Washington Commanders and Tyler Heineke? It's a divisional game. You're on a short work week. Your coaching's not very good. Ex I, I, now, we take that back. Your your defensive coach, I think I've I, I've been overly impressed with in what he's been able to do. I totally have been impressed with Sean Desai. Okay, and we we said the day he was hired. This is a great hire because of what Pete Carroll said and what others said. By the way, look at the influence Vic Fangio is having with the Miami Dolphins. Okay, so he's kind of cut from that cloth there. He's done a great job. Mm -hmm with lesser talent. The offense, to me, it comes up to what Joe Theismann said yesterday. Brian Johnson so far has not shown he's a very good situational play caller with that offense and with Jalen Hurts right now. And with your penalties, that's what will keep Washington in this game if they don't turn it over. If Washington doesn't turn it over, they'll keep it within a score. Not Colorado, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Fantastic. Great place. Almost went and played college football there. I followed up on the penalty. Eagles are tied with Buffalo for fifth in the league in averaging penalties per game with five per game. They are actually one of the most disciplined teams. Funny, I got a different stat here. I got 15 penalties. Okay? Okay, we'll have to go back and take a look at that. I had a guy from the stat. Uh, give me that. Okay. So... If, if they don't have good coaching in this ball game here, they'll keep this game. There's not a chance that I think that Wash. See, 
I look, I look at Washington, and you know what I look at Washington with? Washington has this. They got a good player here. 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 But they don't really have good players across the board to be able to combat with um, with, with, with what Philly has. Philly's got a great old line across the board. Um, they're better in the back end, okay? So to me, again, I look at them and I say, um, I, I would say going forward here, I would go down the line here and say that Philadelphia run the ball at them until they can prove that they can't that they can't stop the run. If they can't stop the run, if for me in this game, this is a this is about Philly not getting Jalen Hurts on track. This is Philadelphia getting the offense back in sequence again when it comes to situational play calling like they did a year ago. I don't really think it has anything that that you don't want to I I'm not looking to get Jalen Hurts going. I'm looking to get the offense balanced again. And what I mean by balanced, balance is throughout the entire season. One game you may have to run the ball 47 times. One game you may have to throw the ball 36 times. This is a game here where, to me, people think you have to run the ball at them. I do believe you have to. That will open up those lanes in the seam and a wide receiver coming across the backside. Here's what you have also. You know, Twiz goes, you guys are going to F these guys up. You did it a year ago. You split. It's not about one game. This is about the season. You split. You lost to inferior. Hey, you lost to an inferior football team last year. I mean, one of the worst teams that you played. Well, I shouldn't say that because they were eight, eight, and one. Wasn't like they were horrible a year ago. They were, yeah, that's right. New year. And your offense isn't playing well. You're right. New year. I wish you'd apply that same shit to your team. By the way, um, your secondary still one of the worst in the pro football. As good as you got, I mean, you know, you know what this week was listening to the radio shows in Philly, trying to convince me that you guys, because you stopped Baker Mayfield, have a, have turned a corner in your secondary. When those first two quarterbacks ate your ass alive. I mean, there's no question. You know, anytime I, I, I can't, before I bring Mike Golic on, all I'm saying here for you guys is to understand when you're in a short work week, divisional game, you go out and you draft to beat Washington, New York, and Dallas. Chicago, San Francisco, of course you care about them down the line. But the reason Washington beat you a year ago with lesser talent is because it's a divisional game. People don't understand that. You got mountains of tape and you know tendencies. And that's what Joe Theismann even said yesterday. Let's bring our friend Mike Gullick in and, and get his take on this thing. First and foremost, Mike, um, I have to get your take on this here. The tush push, or as we're calling it, the bro brotherly shove. Ha. Okay. I mean, is it or is it not a football play? Well, I mean, listen, as, as a couple of former D linemen, I, I, I don't know what you thought. I hate it. I mean, I, I think it's brutally unfair, but nobody gives a damn about the defense anymore. You know, everything's made for the offense. So, Go ahead and let, you know, 500 pounds of, of player push a quarterback, a big quarterback, by the way, to get the yards. I mean, it's hard to stop. I mean, we, we, we see short yardage plays, and we know what short yardage plays are. As a, 
as a D lineman, you, you go low and try and make a pile and not get pushed back, and you let your linebackers take it over the top. Maybe someone on the D line tries to shoot a gap occasionally, but when you have that much beef pushing the other way, it's tough to stop. So I hate it. The league year a few years ago tried to say it wasn't allowed, but never enforced it. Never, I don't think once enforced it. And finally, they just punched us, piloted it, and washed their hands of it and said, screw it, go ahead and, and do it all you want. So uh, their success rate is, I think, in the 90 percentile of 92. Of 92, yeah. So it's not going to go away. The, the, the league isn't going to outlaw something that is working well for the offense. You know, it's funny, Mike, on extra points and field goals, you can't use a leverage play. Right. And you can't jump up, but you can, with this play, push a guy from behind and they don't enforce it that way. I think probably when you get Rich McKay and those guys together in the competition committee, they'll probably come up and go like this. You can't you 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 can't help the running quarterback because they are pushing and pulling the guy across the line of scrimmage at times. Yeah, the one thing they're not allowed to do, they're not allowed to pull. Now, again, will that ever get called? Who knows? Goddard did but, it last week. He pulled him across the fir yeah, first yeah. line. And, and that you're not supposed to be able to do. And like I said, you know, the leverage play on a field goal block or something, again, that's defense. You know, so we 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 kind of lose, you know. We just have to accept that at this point and and understand that's that's going to be a play. Of the Eagle. I'm surprised more teams don't use it. In all honesty, Jalen Carter's play. I said this <laughs> on draft day, Mike. I think he's got Jerome Brown talent. I think you're looking at a kid that obviously the issues that around the draft time and the combines, you know, kind of maybe scare teams like Chicago away. But everything that we've seen so far, and just get your thoughts on him, how. He has just been a force so far. I mean, this guy looks like Quentin Williams out of the gate. Just your take on him. Oh, he's a, I mean, listen, we knew his on-field attributes. It was the off-field stuff that started make, making people shy away. Where there were two, I mean, D linemen, but edge rushers, right, taken before him. Yep. Uh, Tyree Wilson and Will Anderson. I know it's a different position, edge rusher to interior player, but this guy is, is it's like one of those things if, if you draft over, you know, would, would uh, Jacksonville take Aiden Hutchinson now? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, because that, that guy has been playing incredibly well. And now Jalen Carter going nine seems awfully low <laughs> considering his talent. But we knew his talent on the field. That wasn't really the question. And he is – I mean, that defense uh, with him and Jordan Davis in the middle, Fletcher Cox still, still doing his thing at, at his age is just devastating. But Jalen Carter right out of the gate, he just collapses a pocket – he pushes a lineman back on a running play, so a play that's supposed to go between the tackles now is bouncing east and west, which lets your friends come in and make the play. He is on the field as advertised. Mike, when you get a change in coordinators, Theismann said something yesterday to us, and I wonder if you subscribe to the same theory here, that you can have the same playbook, Mike. You can have the same fundamentals on what you're trying to approach each and every single game. But this is the difference in play callers situationally, you have a guy that's got more of a feel for the game, more of a feel for the quarterback. Um, like when Frank Reich had to make plays and had to make play calls for Nick Foles versus Carson Wentz to win a Super Bowl in that transition, do, do you subscribe to that? And maybe that's why we're seeing a little bit of the struggling in the passing game for the Eagles. Oh, yeah. I mean, could be uh, w w without a doubt. What The one thing a uh, coordinator and a quarterback – have to be on par with is the, the most things the comfort the quarterback is comfortable with. I mean, look at the situation in Chicago, Luke Getze and 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 Justin Fields. I mean, they're so not on the same page. I, I called a couple of those games last year and and the not calling of things that work to Justin Fields, you know, strength blows my mind. Now, uh it's different in Philly where it's going well, but it's not the offense that we saw out of them last year by any stretch. But it'll grow. It, it takes more of that relationship of coordinator and quarterback of getting comfortable. You know, that's what they do during the week. What plays against this particular defense? What plays do you like? What plays don't you like? Then what plays are you comfortable with given situations more than others? And then it's just a matter of the chess pieces moving on the table of when you call those plays.
Mike, I, I I said that last year, and as you know, remember, remember when the Wildcat came in, Mike? Nobody yeah. had a playbook on it. Yeah. Or Mouse Davis's offenses, nobody knew what to do because he was trying to spread you out, do all this and that. Do you think this year with Hurts, one of the things that they did was they caught up with him a little bit because you're hearing a lot of people from Belichick to Bowles saying it's kind of a one read offense because that's kind of what the RPO is. Well, I mean. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, that's why you don't see any screens, Mike, in the Philly offense, you know? So I would ask you, I mean, again, is, is there another step he can take to get to another level to improve his game? Because he's going to have to. Well, well, yeah, it would be less RPOs because you're right. An RPO is, I mean, they're, they're picking one guy in the defense and that's who they're reading. Everything is based off of that. It's like back when I was in Philly, we ran the Buddy Ryan's 46 defense, right? We put Reggie on the nose. Me and Jerome or Mike Pitts covered the guard. So Reggie was basically one on one. You're out, your perimeter could be a little, you know, suspect at that point, but it worked. And then offenses learned what to do against it. Run the run the run the corner a little bit, you know, run off off the ends a little bit. And you learn whatever works, you find a counter for it at some point. RPO is a is kind of a one move thing, right? Yeah. And and, and so you figure that out and then you have to be ready to adjust. So yeah, that's the hot thing right now. And they run it well, not perfectly, but they still run it well, but teams figure it out. I mean, team, listen, the defense watch film too. They know, okay, they're reading this guy in the RPO. So let's bait with another guy. Cause we know where they're going to go with the ball. If he pulls it, he's going to pass it. Basically, you know where it's going to go. So you bait, you know, and, and try and, and get the quarterback to make that throw and take advantage of it. So yeah, especially something that doesn't have a lot of intricacies to it, you can start to defense it a little better, and then it's your job as an offense to start to you know do what's next. Because I, I heard you talking before I came on, you do things for the division as well, right? Because you play yeah. that team twice a year. I remember the late, great Fritz Shermer, defensive coordinator, one of the greatest, when he was in Green Bay, basically saw – other teams in his division getting big wide receivers, i.e. Randy Mosses. And he said, we need to draft bigger corners to match up with that. We have to match up in our division first because the division is a thing you can figure out the most because you see those plays executed time and time again and the same personnel a lot of times. Uh, so it's just a matter of really execution on the field. So if you have a situation where – you know, it, it, in RPO, again, we know what's run there. Read one guy, give the ball, don't give the ball, get rid of the ball. You know, so you you eventually figure that out. So, like I said, you got to be ready with the next thing, the next iteration of whatever that's going to be. See, to me, that becomes predictable if I'm a coordinator. Yeah. And it, I, to me, and I think that's what's coming up here and why you're seeing A.J. Brown on the sideline, Mike, talking to them or Goddard saying, hey, I'm not – really happy with my position in the offense. You know, then they go back to the run game. Mike, I said this this week. Maybe you disagree with me. I don't think you can win a Super Bowl with a one-read quarterback and a one-dimensional oh. offense. No. And to me, Philly's got to figure this out. It's not about being 3-0, and Mike. This is about the last game of the year. Yeah, yeah. This isn't about now. It's about later. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. And I agree. You know, just like nobody's winning a Super Bowl, the, the – League has changed. Nobody's winning a Super Bowl being a running team. Nobody's winning a Super Bowl on a one-read team. I, I agree with that. Um, so they're going to have to and, – and obviously I'm sure there's other plays that they run, but that's their bread and butter, you know, and, and we all understand that. So, yeah, I'm with you. You know, things get figured out. You have to be a little more versatile. You have an excellent defense as well that's going to help you. But you got to be a little more versatile. In the running game, they do that well, obviously, because, I mean, they, they proved – you don't need that that great back every year. They had Miles Sanders gain over 1,200 yards and let him go, making six mil a year in Carolina. You know, and now look what DeAndre Swift is doing after he gets a chance when Gainwell gets hurt. Plus, you have Hurts being able to run the ball. So that's always while the RPO is is that bread and butter pass game. Your running game is what's going to help that. You can't win alone on the running game, but it really can open up the passing game. Not. Not the RPO I'm talking so much as play action can do, which is going to get the other other receivers and ball catchers in play. Um, Mike, Dallas, San Francisco, Philly. Who's the best team in the NFC right now? Um, I would say 
the mo the two most complete teams are San Francisco and Philly. I still worry a bit about the Dallas offense, and especially you have the guys on the old line. Uh, they missed three: Tyron Smith, the left tackle; Biotis at center, and Zach Martin. You know, walk in Hall of Famer at the right guard. Smith's going to be a Hall of Famer too. So you miss those guys. I mean, look at look at Green Bay last night missing two starters on the old line. That old line got devastated. Um, so I think the depth with San Francisco and Philly are better. And then I think overall the San Francisco has more weapons that they use, right? With McCaffrey, with Debo, with uh, with Kittle, and with Brandon Ayuk, who was really stepping to his own this year. And then that's an offense where it's like, dude, Brock Purdy, you are a point guard. Get the damn ball out of your hands to one of those guys and let them do their things. They've been the leader in yards after the catch for the last couple of years. So it doesn't matter if it's a two-yard slant or a 40-yard you know, deep ball. It doesn't matter. Now, Miami may overtake them this year in yards after the catch because they're <laughs> ridiculous. But I would say Philly and San Francisco would be on a collision course because I think they're the two most complete teams. You and, I, you and I both know Brian Baldinger. He's a good friend of yeah. both of ours here. And he said something about Montana. And every time you make a comment like this, people think you're comparing Brock Purdy to Montana. Nobody with any kind of common sense no. is going to compare Brock Purdy to Joe Montana. However, he's got tendencies like Montana. Gets the ball out quick. Knows where to go with it. Pre-snap <laughs> reads. I mean, Mike, I mean, here's a guy that was the last player taken in the draft. I mean, is it really the four years he played at Iowa State why he just seems more ready to rock? So I, I, I covered him when I was calling college games uh, for a couple of years. And it's a one thing in when you have the players' meetings and watch tape and coaches' meetings and all that is the one thing I really saw with him is, boy, from the neck up, he had it going on. That, you know, you could talk about the quarterback skills, arm, movement, and all that. You know, especially in today's game where you had such athletic quarterbacks who can throw as well. But he knew where to go with the ball and he would get rid of the ball. So he had the tendencies that were like, you know what? This could translate at the next level because that's a whole idea of a quarterback. You know, let's, you're a Pat Mahomes where you're a miracle worker as you're running around, right? But if you're a guy, <clears throat> and then that's what the league used to be. They were more pocket passers. Now, Purdy can move some, but. The, the, how smart were you pre-snap? How smart were you one second after the snap when the defense tries to disguise? So so you see what's going on pre-snap. You kind of have an idea where you're going to go. And then if they change post-snap within a second, if you have to rearrange it and change it, you got to know where you're going to go with the ball. And the thing that helped, it's a great uh, – the Kyle Shanahan offense is a great offense. It's certainly quarterback friendly. But they did a great job, he and John Lynch, getting the weapons around it. So – you have those guys, but that was the main thing I saw with him. Knew he wasn't going to be a first rounder because he didn't. There wasn't that wow factor, which sometimes we get too caught up in. Uh, but he had the the intangibles of this dude knows where to go with the ball. This dude will get it out as well, and he was always an intriguing look of what he was going to be like at the next level. And it certainly helps when you go to a good team, right? Oh, Normally, yes. the top quarterbacks go to awful teams, and it takes a while to see what you're going to get. Patrick Mahomes, look at him. You know, Andy Reid's smart enough to trade up for him, so he's still a you know that first rounder. But going to an excellent team makes a big difference. Mike, you know, look, going back to Dallas a little bit, I said that this is the difference between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles is a prime example of what we saw last week. The Eagles are three and zero, not playing their best ball, but they figure it out. Mike, they're three right. and zero. Dallas drops a game like Arizona turns around and beats Philly. I mean, they just aren't consistently in the light all the time for that team to be able to be a true Super Bowl contending team. I mean, Mike, I look at this New England game coming up. I could, I, I, I could tell you this: that loss in Arizona might even cost them yeah. another game this Sunday. Well, I mean that. Yeah, you you can't. Now it's the NFL, so it happens that you lose games you shouldn't. You know. It, it more can't happen to you in college because that can cost you, especially the top teams if you let one slip away or where it can cost you. The NFL, it's all about getting in the playoffs. I, you know, last year, a losing record, you know, in the in the NFC South got in in Tampa Bay. So it doesn't matter how you get there. Just be hitting your stride by the end of the year. So that's why I hold out hope for Dallas is the fact their defense is excellent. 
You, you'll give away – giving away a game every now and then in the NFL isn't the worst thing in the world unless you start talking about later in the season or looking back on one that may have cost you a number one seed or a seed where you're going to host a playoff game. And I'm sure every team would like to be in that position. But the most important thing is to make sure if you have attrition early, like I talked about their O-line, can that O-line be healthy at the end when they need them the most? It's a team, you know, that's running. Their, I think their average is just under 150 a game, but the passing game isn't really going all that well now, just over, I think, 200 yards a game. So, you know, I, I think it's that's an area they need to improve upon, and they're going to have to. You're going to have to be able to, to throw the ball around a little bit better than that if you want to get where you want to go. C.D. Lamb was phenomenal last year. Um, so that's part of it that has to, has to get churning. But they're not going anywhere if they don't have a healthy offensive line. Two last questions for you, Mike. Tua, tug of Viola. I mean, boy, I'll tell you what. Look at the Dolphins. Chris Greer, the GM, picks up the option, Mike. $18 million, $19 million, whatever it is. This guy looks like Patrick Mahomes. I mean, can, it, it, it's it's the health issue, obviously, but they threw up 70 points, sure. Mike, last week without Jalen Waddle, And they sat him almost for two quarters. I mean – you think that Dolphin team is Super Bowl on it? Uh, think about the other side of it. Could you imagine Denver defense being in film the next day? My God. No way. I mean, how much that would be going through my mind during the game of, oh, my God, I got to watch this again, of just how brutal that was. I picked Miami to win the division. I picked Ty Tyreek Hill to be offensive player of the year. I just think they have that explosiveness. The question was going to be, how is the run game? And most search runs extremely hard. And then how is the defense going to play? I talked to last week, Durham Smythe, their tight end. And I, I said, now really go inside. I said, we see completions out of quarterbacks, but what about the completion where the quarterback lets you run with it after, throws you open, hits you in stride? You know, that's the completion you're looking for. You know, Aaron Rodgers was always so great at that. And he said that's worked on so much, and it's such an emphasis because they have such playmakers. and. Well, they, why Ty, Tyreek Hill is a deep threat. We know that. You can lay the ball up. But they have guys who you run a three-yard in route, a three-yard slant, can take it to the house. But that ball has to be perfect. That ball, they got to catch it in stride. The ball has to be put where the receiver can do damage after the play. And Durham said that's what Tua does so well, and he does. He's incredibly accurate. But, again, it's not just the completion. You know, it's it's the way the ball's completed and what kind of chance are you giving your receivers to catch the ball? And you you I'm sure you saw that stat. Yeah, they do the the fastest player during the during the, the the week, and it's always been a Miami Dolphin, you know, when they're when they're running with the ball to score. It's been unbelievable, but so much of that is on Tua putting the ball in a great spot. Finally, I, I, I've been asking everybody, Boomer Sison and everybody who's come on the program, and I've been asking about what they thought of Deion Sanders, and I got to think, Mike, you know, it, it's not – I don't know if you and I, as as players who know who he is and what he's done and who he is and how he handles and conducts himself, but the way the guy's going about it and how he's changing the game, I mean, nil and transfer portal, I think coaches are – they're nervous about him because he becomes another obstacle in the process of trying to win a national title versus conventional, Mike, just – that's my takeaway. How, how well, do you see what he's doing? So we're in a new era of the portal, right? And, right. And Free agency. Sometimes older coaches, like, look at Dabo Swinney and Clemson. He has not bought into that at all. And, you know, it, it's adapt or die. Um, now, not to say you got to get 86 of them and redo no. your team. <laughs> Colorado was just in that position. I think coaches normally uh, don't like the way – probably Dion goes about his business. Dion's always been flashy as a player and now as a coach. And you know what? He's damn good at it. He's damn good as a player. Obviously one of the greatest athletes to ever be part of our pro sports, a hall of famer. But now I, I like the way he's leading guys. Is it a little showboatish and flashy at times, but he, boy, he really mixes in the old school. Yeah. And he really mixes in the old school, which, which I like. So I, he's got, and the bottom line is getting your players to believe. And his players are buying in. Listen, when he talked about the whole 
do you believe now thing when they came out and beat T- TCU? My thought was, listen, what it's what degree of belief do we want? Do I believe you've turned the program around and is going in the right direction? Absolutely. Do I believe that you're one of the upper teams in the conference or in the country? No, you're not yet. And Dion even said it after they got smoked by Oregon and will probably get smoked by USC. He said, get us now. Now is the worst we're going to be. And I agree with him because you're going to get recruits coming in, whether it's 18-year-olds or sophomores or juniors that are hitting the portal to go play to his school. For them to get where he needs to go, he needs to stack up on the D-line and the O-line. That's where they're getting absolutely manhandled. But I love the way, and and again, I think most coaches aren't real happy with how out and in the open he is about it. But that's always been prime, man. I mean, and I knew when they were getting beat by Oregon that he was going to handle it the way he did. We got our butts whooped. We have to learn from this. It's a learning experience. Get us now. It's the worst we'll ever be. He said all the right things. So I dig what he's doing. He's turned that program around. It'll still be a little bit, but he's turned that program around. Mike, let me sneak Notre Dame on you. Are you happy with the direction of the program? Oh, absolutely. I love Marcus. Marcus is a great recruiter. Listen, we got a throwing quarterback in Sam Hartman. So when you're down 10 nothing to Ohio State in the last few years, you'd be like, oh, no, we're in trouble. We don't have a throwing quarterback to come back. Now we do. We came back. We're leading the game 14 to 10. Was it inexcusable to have 10 players on the field for the last two plays? Absolutely. And you know what? The coaches know that. The players who were supposed to be in the game know that. It's a bad mistake. And it happened on a monster stage, right? It couldn't have been on a bigger stage for that to happen. So, yes, was that embarrassing? Yes. Should it not happen? No, that should not happen. But they were toe-to-toe with Ohio State, throwing haymakers back and forth. They're one of the better teams in the country. And now going forward, what you do, you root for Ohio State, And because that helps down the road and you know, because as playing at Notre Dame, you know, this you're independent, you're going for the title, which means you got to get in the playoffs, which means you can't have more than one loss. They know that. And no two loss team ever made the final four. When we go to 12, that may change, but right now one more loss and that part of their goal is done. And they know that they put themselves in that position, unfortunately with that loss. But I, I'm a big fan of Marcus Freeman. The players buy into what he's selling. He's a, excellent recruiter and i like direct direction it's going i'm going to send you out with this one here about your brother bob i'm a voter for the hall of fame and i didn't realize that when bob left notre dame he was the all-time leading tackler in notre dame history and he's now second and i think grable i think he is number one how is that guy not in the pro football College Football Hall of Fame, Mike, and well, no I, one's pushed them. Well, I think that's it. And and I don't know the process, Dan. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. But I caped for him when the last group was mentioned, and there was a linebacker from Notre Dame, Mike, Michael Stonebreaker, who made yep. the College Football Hall of Fame. And I preface this by saying Stonebreaker deserves to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. You know, consensus All-American, 88 title team, tons of tackles. He deserves to be there. My argument was, if he des- it does deserve to be there, my brother deserves to be there. My brother Bob was a two-time All-American, consensus his senior year, won a national championship against te- when they beat Texas in 77, left as a leading tackler of all time. Bob Crable is now number one. My brother is number two. Manti Teo is number three. Bob and My brother Bob and Bob Crable are tied for most tackles in a game in Notre Dame history with 26. So Bob has done everything that you need to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. Dan, I just think it's been such a long time. It's been a forgotten name. And I've tried on shows like this or my own show to say, man, look at his stats. Look at some of the guys that are going in, deserve to be in. But if they deserve to be in, my brother Bob deserves to be in. And you get till, I think it's 50 years, 50 years after. So. He, you know, he graduated in 79. So that's what till 2029. So he's got a few more years uh, and, and he just needs somebody to be behind him. I know I am. And I talked about it. And I, I went to the committee and I said this, I go, have you guys ever debated Bob Golick? I go, this guy won a national title. You put Stonebreaker. And I go, and I'm with you, Mike. 
I'm no no shade on Michael Stonebreaker. No, no. no, nothing, nothing like that. But I'm like, wait a minute. You put that guy in because what? He's more recent. It's recency bias, well, Mike. Well, and, and think about it. Bob, Bob Crable is in the College Football Hall of Fame and should be. Manti is going to be in the College Football oh, yes. Hall of Fame, right? And he's behind my brother in, in total tackles. Now, Manti got a lot of hardware as well. So, I, man, and and Manti didn't have a title. Bob Crable, Crable didn't have a, a national title. My brother Bob did. And my brother Bob was the MVP of the game they won and beat in Texas. And, and uh, you know, the Heisman Trophy winner and the Outland winner on defense and the, the Lou Groza Award winner on Texas. Man, they, they, he beat, they beat him, and Bob was the MVP of that game. So I, I, I don't know what more he needs to do to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. And for those out there, it was Earl Campbell in that game. Yeah, so. Earl Campbell. <laughs> Russell Erksleben was the kicker. Brad yeah. Shearer was the Outland Trophy winner, the defensive lineman. Yeah, and, and they smoked him 38-10 to 10 in that game. And won the title. So, Dan, I'm with you. I, I'm with you, and I'll continue to talk about him and such, and uh, and and just hope it can happen for him. Absolutely, Mike. You gave us so much of your time. Tell the great folks how they can find you on DraftKings and your show. Are you still doing it with your son? Yeah, yeah. We officially now it was just his show, but now we've changed it to our show. It's called Gojo and Golik. It's on eight to ten Eastern. Uh, every morning. So I'm back to doing morning shows, not six to 10 anymore, but eight to 10. <laughs> and on it, it's on uh, Samsung TV plus uh, Roku and some of these other streaming places that, that I don't even know how to pronounce anymore. But Roku, uh, Samsung TV plus DraftKings YouTube channel, DraftKingsNetwork.com. So all the ways you can get the streaming things in this new world we're in where everyone asked me, oh boy, how is it different? And I said, you know what? I turn on a microphone and I talk. Where they dispense it, that's up to them. That's not my job. <laughs> you know why you're such a good man, Mike? You see these people that get pushed off of shows and they're still bitching and complaining and arguing and barking about this undisputed or first take or this and that. Man, you were so un uncool treated at a particular place that I won't mention on how it was handled. And yet you've handled yourself like this, you know, that's not me, man. That's for others to decide that kind of crap. So it's it's how you've conducted yourself, Mike. I think that's what attracts people to you and well, how people listen and watch you. I appreciate that. The way I look at it, when I got cut from uh, the Houston Oilers and then uh, cut from the Miami Dolphins, there's no time to look back on that team and say, I'm mad at that team. I got to look forward and see what my next team uh, is going to be and got to move on. Same in this situation. Mike, thank you so much, my friend. Have a great weekend. Make sure you check his show off at DraftKings and him and his boy do the show. Thank you so much, my friend. You got it, Dan. Take care. You bet. Mike Golick spending so much time with us. We really appreciate him coming aboard like that. So fantastic stuff. I loved what he said, too, about the way that you look at on how you have to evolve as a quarterback when it comes to being a quarterback in the NFL. I didn't know what Mike was going to say. He's saying the same thing I'm saying. That offense that you have right now will not win a Super Bowl. This, it's a, and he even said it as well. It's a one read offense. It's not a progress in reading. Now, what made it so successful a year ago? I think it was more the unknown. That was my contention. There wasn't a lot of tape on Jalen. Now they got tape on him. They know, and it's become predictable. The Eagles have to do something to take that predictability away. Look. I know you guys look at me and you think that I'm just throwing shit at you there when it comes to saying one read. Mike Gullick just echoed the same stuff that I said to you. Maybe kinder. And, and, and by the way, for the record, this is why he lost his job at Alabama. Was because he was a one read guy. Two was a multi-read guy. He reads defenses. He knows where to go and... Like you heard Mike say, this guy has pre-snap capabilities at knowing where the open man's going to be. He reads defenses better. Again, this is good. The key, there's two guys that will turn 
the Eagle offense around. It's not Jalen Hurts. It's Goddard and Swift. The more those guys continue to play. Let me say this to you about DeAndre Swift, too. Hey, Chris, I didn't say it. Mike Golick said it. Here's the one thing that I will say about DeAndre Swift. What's the one thing that DeAndre Swift has to prove moving forward in the Eagle offense? What is the one thing he has to continue to prove? I did not put words in his mouth. Mike Golick said, I agree with you. You can't win a Super Bowl with a one-dimensional uh, offense. Don't worry, the interview will be posted for you later. And it's the offense has become predictable. What, again, what's the one thing that Swift has to prove? For this off. Swift getting better is going to help Hurts and that offense because then he's another dynamic. Hey, that 1,300 yards that Miles Sanders had last year was almost like collateral numbers, wasn't it, when it came to the impact? It, it, I'm not saying 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns is not impactful. I am not saying that because it is. Stay healthy. Here's my... Hey, in his ent- how many a hey, uh, tone? How many years has Swift been in the league? How many years has DeAndre Swift been in the league? No, Hertz doesn't help Swift. He hasn't right now. It's been Swift winning games for the offense. He's been in the league four years. Okay, he's been in the league four years. Is that right? tone he's in his fourth year doesn't deandre swift have to show that he's durable and reliable and what i mean by reliable that he's consistent and putting up what he's doing it's two weeks in a row it's a hell of a start i'm still not sold on deandre swift detroit wasn't now has detroit by the way detroit up upgraded their running game did they not I mean, if I'm Detroit, I'm not unhappy that I move Swift. Are you? If you're a Lion fan, are you are you upset that you moved DeAndre Swift? I don't think so. I think the Alabama kid and the kid they got from Chicago did a they ran the Packers over last night. That game wasn't really close. And I'll say this to you. So Detroit has beaten Green Bay and Kansas City. Who's got more impressive wins between the Eagles and Detroit? I know they dropped a game, but I think if I'm not mistaken, they dropped a game and they had to go up to Seattle. Was it the Seattle game they dropped? That's not the easiest place on the planet to play. Was that the the Seattle game? Was it Seattle? So they've beaten Green Bay in Green Bay at Lambeau. They've been to Seattle on the road, and they went to Arrowhead on the road. So let me get this right. You won at Lambeau, and you won at Arrowhead, and you're the Lions. You feeling okay about yourself? Seattle in overtime, okay? Tell you what, man. Look, I'm not telling you – I'm not telling you the Lions in a head-to-head matchup would beat Philly or San Francisco. I do think, hey, would we agree at least on this one? I, If I had to pick between Detroit and Dallas, who would you take in a game? Who would you take in a game between Detroit and Dallas right now? Who would you take? And again, I'm not, I do not believe the Lions can beat San Francisco. I don't believe they could beat San Francisco and Philly head to head. I don't care where you play it. Okay? I don't care where you play it. I'm taking Detroit. I think they're more battle tested. So you have to go to Seattle 
Lambo, an arrowhead, and you're three and one. I don't know, man. That's pretty impressive. I mean, you're 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 going you're doing this shit on the road. You know, people were saying this about Jordan Love heading into that game. You know, I I I, I think he had a horrible first half. And I think it was a decent second half. He's got he's got a long way to go yet, but it, you know, I mean, I'm all right with him still. He's I tell you what, I will take him over Ryan Tannehill any day. Any day. And as a matter of fact, if I'm going to pick somebody to build my franchise around, Kirk Cousins or him, I might take Jordan Love. And if you said, would you take Dak or Jordan Love? I don't know. Probably Dak. But it's closer than I thought than at the beginning of the season. I would have went Dak. Love's not bad. He played against a good Lions defense. Hey, this kid Aiden Hutchinson, man. You know, I I, I thought he was going to be okay, not great. He looks great. You know, I mean, this is going to kind of like be old school kind of stuff for some of you. You won't know the name. But he's like a Dan Hampton kind of guy. He's kind he's kind of like a Dan Dan Hampton. Okay? So, I mean, Detroit looks good. And Detroit looks good on both sides of the ball. Swift has got to, hey, the more Swift continues to improve, the better you're going to have. See, you need to have another dimension on your offense right now. Who's your number one threat right now offensively? It's your run game, right? You really think AJ's been a threat or Devontae? Kind of. Not really. Last year, AJ was like hair on fire right out of the gate. Devontae was the smooth operator. Didn't get any catches in game one. I think he broke out in that Washington game, if I'm not mistaken, a year ago, didn't he? Then he go then he then he break out in that Washington game game one I thought he I thought it was the Washington game that he broke out a year ago okay so yeah no man we're gonna look at week four heading into week four of the National Football League. And I think there's going to be some spectacular games. Also, Sam Howe versus the Eagle defense. We're going to take a look at that. Don't forget also, my friends, my good friends at Hooters, the 40th anniversary. We are so proud that they are part of our program. We love those guys so much. Been involved with them for over 40 years. And your Saturday football, your Sunday football, your Monday football. Hey, look, find one of the seven locations nearest you and for you to go in there. Go to northeasthooters.com. Also, hooters2go.com. Tuesdays, buy 10 wings, get 10 boneless. Wing Wednesdays, 1983. I mean, all you can eat. Saturdays, kids eat for free. Happy hour special, six bucks, six items. Northeasthooters.com. That's northeasttutors.com. And when you go into any one of the locations, do me a favor, tell them Big Sill sent you. and Hooters, the perfect pair.
If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. 267-261-3428. Heading down the shore. Here, imaginations run wild, and time stands still. Because here, you can find the best of the Jersey Shore, all on one five-mile island. So leave the old you behind, and get lost in the woods. Score and save at Southeastern PA in Delaware with Colony Pools this football season. And let the experts close your pool with a custom Merlin safety cover in green for the birds. And if you join our winter watch team, we'll give you another 20% off and Colony Pools will handle it all. Keep your tiles on your pool, not in your pool. Fly with Colony right now, birds fans. Visit flywithcolony.com. G-L-E-S Eagles It's kind of crazy when you hear some of the media people talking about Chandler Jones I also said this about Antonio Brown It's no longer football conversation any longer with the Raider Is this guy going to do a football? That man needs help and love right now. Where's the NFL Players Association? Jesus, criminy, man. It can't just be about sitting in the commissioner's lap. There's a player that needs your freaking help. Why aren't you sending, or why isn't the league, instead of arresting the guy, why aren't you sending medical personnel and people who can help his mental health? Because they don't give a shit. They don't care whether he puts a gun in his mouth or he quits or whatever. They never did and they never will. They lie to you and tell you they care about us. They don't care about players. If they did the commissioner of the National Football League wouldn't be the only non-owner with lifetime benefits. How does that guy who's never taken a fucking hit have lifetime benefits? How's that possible? Why does he deserve it? Oh, I know. Because he's America's best liar. It's a shame. I really feel for Chandler Jones. He needs compassion. Okay? (laughs) Anthony goes, a crazy topic. Of course it's a crazy topic to bring up because no one brings up mental health issues with players with improper medical benefits. Sorry. I will always bring it up. It's a brotherhood, not just about playing in the league. It's about aftercare. You're damn right. Crazy topic, because most people on the air have never played competitive sports in their life, and they would never understand. Anthony, have a great weekend, man. God bless you. See you, see Anthony. Bye. God bless you.
Anthony, bye. You're not forced to be here. You're not. I don't force you to be here. When does the NFL Players Association step up? Sad. Let me say something to you about that push play. Okay? You have someone fighting against you now that is totally, you, that is without a doubt going to be something that's going to take your play away. Peter King. Peter King has the ear of Rich McKay, who we're friends with. And you know that because he's been on the program. Okay? That play will not be, well, there'll be a variation of the play. Can I tell you what my wife said? Tone, I don't know if you will agree with this. You know what my wife said if they want to try to change it? So instead of putting, and I kind of agree with my wife. My wife's a rugby coach. She goes like this. It's not a scrum. It's a mall in what they do with how they're trying to push him across the line of scrimmage. She said, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not a scrum. She says, if that's me, I line up a guy like Derrick Henry on fourth and one, and I line him up as my quarterback. And I use my power back to do that in case I don't want to use a $55 million quarterback where I potentially could get hurt. He's the second best ball handler on your team, usually outside of the center and quarterback because they handle the football more than anybody on the field. Why don't you run the play with Derrick Henry? Just run the play with your top power back on fourth and one. She goes, just take Hurts out and have, because again, do you really want to put a $55 million guy who's so important to your team? Do you want to put that guy in harm's way where he could have his foot stepped on, you blow your knee out, what have you, right? You put a big back back there and you have, you snap it to your running back. And I'm not talking about shotgun. I'm talking about right up on, you're not stopping Derrick Henry in one yard with Jason Kelsey or somebody like you. You're not stopping that. And you don't need any push. That's what the guy does for a living. That's what I would do. Because when you start talking about these $50 million quarterbacks, you start doing this. Eh, you know, I might not want to, I might not want to put that guy in harm's way. Bleach goes, you're not stopping Hurts. Yes, they are stopping Hurts. You just missed the entire point, Bleach. You just missed the entire point. That play will be stopped. Because the league's going to stop it. You see, defenses can't scheme against it, so the league's going to stop it. You completely missed the point. Put different personnel in is what we're saying. You completely missed the point on that. How many times did Brady get hurt running it? Okay. Have at it. Sills, if they ban the brotherly shove, it will only benefit the Eagles. The other teams can't do it. They can't do it now with the extra help. Chris doesn't. It hurts the Eagles because they're the only one that kills people with it. Okay. I mean, I just said that, Maxon. The play is going to be stopped because the league is going to stop it. You got to come up. Again, this comes back to once again. This comes back to once again evolving. You keep evolving. 
That's the one thing again. And again, when we talk about the offense, that when we talk about Jalen, it's not about – there's only a high – there's only a certain ceiling. You know how you guys are all talking about Jalen Hurst getting to another level? There is no another level. Because there's another, there's not another level to that offense. Players playing better, maybe better situational play calling. The coordinator's got to get better. He does. Totally true. You know, I'm more apt to believe what you guys were saying about the coaching. Because just like Mike Gullick said, it's predictable now. It's a one-read offense. That's it. RPO, it's a one-read offense. Anybody with any knowledge knows that. Unless you're in Philly and you think that this guy is a progressive reader, and he's not, never been, in his entire career. In his entire career. Before we get into week four here, Sam Howell versus the Eagle defense. And if you're Eric Bieniemy, how do you attack the Eagle defense? Okay. Do you know one advantage that he has going against his Eagle defense? Your corners don't play press coverage. They're not man cover corners. They play center field, which means free release, which means don't do seven step, cut it down to five step, more rhythm timing. They'll always be open. The key will be the plus 25 play. The Eagles are great at not giving the plus 25 play up. That's what the entire integrity of the defense is built around. Pressure, don't give up the plus 25. Those are the two intangibles that they have and that they've done pretty well for two years. Your corners are center fielders. They don't. Again, guys, every guy that has played against the Eagles has put numbers up. Every guy. Evans under with the 60 yards, not great. The 160 that... um. Jefferson had 159. The tight ends in New England killed you. I mean, so what they try to do is play everything underneath. Everything underneath. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think eight catches 60 yards is horrible. It wasn't great. It wasn't on Mike Evans. I thought Mike Evans would have more. But again, he was wide open. That's what I'm saying with McLaren and with the kid from Penn State on the other side. They'll be open. Every wide receiver that has played against you has been wide open. So, if you're the enemy, again, the run game, do I think that the Washington Commanders are going to be able to run the ball on the Philadelphia Eagles? No. They couldn't run the ball on the Buffalo Bills. And I don't think the Buffalo Bills have better interior tackles than what the Eagles have right now. I do not. Fletcher's playing great, too, and so's Milton. Besides the two dudes that we've been naming all week. The whole entire group has played well. It's been a, they're, they're the best group on defense right now. So they can. So what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to get their backs and screen passes. The fastest way to slow, what's the fastest way to slow up a pass rush? Okay? Fastest way to slow up a pass rush. Quick, quick, the quick game, middle screens. QBs that can get rid of the ball fast like Jones and Cousins will light us up. That's what, dirty, that's what they're going to try to have to attempt. But what, what, what kills me about Washington you had like 10 something carries for 107 yards or 13 carries for like 107 yards. And it's like you quit and you're averaging eight yards a game. Now I'll tell you this, the screen game, that's also going to do this to the linebackers with the Eagles. It's going to have to have them play deeper. 
and not so tight on the ball, which could help the run game. To me, slot screens, middle screens, try to get them linebackers back off the ball. Because in my opinion, what Philadelphia is going to do, they're going to know this. Let's make Sam Howe beat us. Because I don't think Sam Howe can. Personally, I don't think he can either. Personally, I don't think he can either. Okay? I, I, I don't think he can. Now, it's going to be up to Eric Bieniemy to move these guys around. How do you move guys around if the quarterback is inexperienced? I'm just telling you what coordinators like. I sat in a room, and I was schooled by Dave Wanstead, Buddy Ryan, um, Lamar Leachman, defensive coaches like that who sat with me and showed me how to get people open in what people were trying to do to you. Have you? I sat for three days, two years in a row with Buddy for six hours on how people try to get open, what they're trying to do. Splits. Um, what they're trying to do in counter trays. Everything. Lamar Leachman, one of the greatest defensive line coaches, and the guy who coached Lawrence Taylor coached me on how just a subtle three technique shade or a tilt can change the entire dynamic on a blocking scheme. Okay? I'm just, just, just listen. So what Del Rio, Rivera, then again, those guys beat you a year ago. I don't have to give those guys kudos. Okay? I don't have to give those guys source. I posted a picture with me and Buddy Ryan at the University of Miami. Go on my Twitter page. It's there. <laughs> Go ahead. So, you tell me, if you're the Eagles, what's the one thing you're trying to do to him? Are you going to jam the wideouts? Who's covering McLaurin? Let's see. Bradbury? Probably. The kid Dotson, is that his name, from Penn State? He's pretty good. Again, like I said, this is a 31-17 game. In my eyes, it's a 31-17 game. That's how I see the talent differential between the two. I, 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 I think it's a 30, but I think it's a 28-20 ball game because it's a divisional game and you're on a short work week. Johan Dotson, kid's a pretty good ball player. I actually like him. Batman says McLaurin is the only one that scares me. You know what? Hey, Maniac, am I right? When I look at those numbers from a year ago in that Washington game, wasn't Washington's numbers very pedestrian? Like, were, were there, like, huge numbers? And I don't remember Washington having, like, some massive 200-yard rushing game or, like, a three. Am I right when I say that? There wasn't, like, 29 first downs or... Am I, am I right? I mean, I don't remember McLaurin. Did he have 100 yards in that game? I'm talking to win. I, I, I don't remember anybody in that Washington game, like with some psychotic game um, that, that had like, like, an, like did, Heineke, did Heineke even throw for 200 yards in that ball game? I, 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 did he? I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember them. I, I, I just don't remember the numbers that were in that ball game. Last year, we had nine sacks against Washington in the first game. I'm talking about the loss. I know you, you rolled them in the first game. Okay? Heineke was averaging 2-1 JM. Is that on his release to get the ball out? So they went quick pass. That's probably what they're going to try to do. McLaurin had eight, 128 yards. Maniac, did he really? All right. Everyone else under 28. Still 128, one guy. 
I mean, they had the ball for 40 minutes. So did they run the ball? I, 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 I just don't remember. And, and Quan, once again, not understanding stats because stats. So, hey, hey, Quan, you think time of possession and rushing matter? Or is that just a stat too? Let's see how smart Quan is here, right? Right, Tone? Hey, Quan, you think time of possession and turnovers and rushing yards, you, that's a stat, right? 152 rushing. Wow. Okay. Okay. So do you, Quan, just asking, you think time of possession and rushing, you think those stats matter or no? Those stats don't matter. Turnovers, that's a stat. Okay. Boy, look at, look at, hey, I love what Quan just said. Last year's stats mean nothing. So everything Jalen Hurts did last year means shit this year too, right, Quan? Try to keep that as a memory bank. And in your memory bank, when you're talking about 2023, can't have it both ways, kid. Can't have it both ways. So when you reference last year and how we did, it's irrelevant. Try to be consistent with that at least. Tell me to be. Why don't you be? Heineke was 17 and 19, 211 in a pick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, at the end of the day, so her, okay, how many turnovers does Jalen have this year? If, this is going to come down to turnovers, that whether or not that game's close. If the Eagles turn the ball over, if the Eagles have for, – for it to be a 28-20 game, the Eagles have to have three turnovers. If the Eagles have no turnovers – when you when you agree, Tone, Hertz had four turnovers through three games. He has four turnovers. When you agree, everyone, Tone, if the Eagles have no turnovers, it's 31-17. If there's three turnovers in the ball game, it's a 28-20 Eagle win. Okay, I, I, I don't believe they're going to have four turnovers. I, I, I'm i not saying they're, they are. But, la, but last year, there were turnovers in that game and why they won. Okay? And like I said, even with the four turnovers, I still don't think they have enough talent. 34-21. I'll tell you something. I heard, I heard Tone say something earlier, and it was spot on. It was spot on, Tone. Here, the, the the commanders have Sweat and Allen, McLaurin. Anybody in the old line? I don't know. Some decent backs, a decent safety. Their talent is spread out with holes all over the joint. You know what I mean? It's like they're not like a group. They don't have a good group. The receivers are probably their best group. Heineke threw for 170. Yeah, pedestrian. Okay, right? It, it's it here, here, watch this. Look at the Eagles. Look at the entire left side from the center out in the old line. Kelsey, Dickerson, Mulata, Goddard, Brown. Shit, dude. That's like a fortress. How many pro bowler, pro bowler, pro bowler, pro bowler, pro bowler. Where on that team in Washington do they have any of that? Maybe the two tackles. They got ran on. Okay? They got ran on. I want I want to I want to throw this at you guys. On a scale of 1 to 10, before we get into week 4 here, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well do you think Lane Johnson's playing this year? I'm going to get to those games, Maniac, I promise. On a scale of 1 to 10, 7 or 8, 
It says tone. I'm going to go Neil with you, seven. Okay? I mean, they've not been, the whole group, but I think the group is getting hammered for the lack of pass probe from the running backs. If you really look at the old line, it's not horrible. Okay? It's not horrible. But Lane has not played Lane Johnson football. He's just not. Do you think Swift, a pro bowler, sports radio right now, he's trending that way. And that's why I say three games. He's trending that way. He sure looks like he's trending that way. Okay. Um, But could it possibly be that the ineffective play of Cam Jurgens next to him is causing some of that inefficiency that you're seeing in Lane. Remember something. A defensive line doesn't have to have continuity. It has it now between those two, Jordan and Carter. You, you're, you're getting that. Usually, do, do you think there's continuity in Los Angeles with Aaron Donald and whoever the hell he's playing next to? You could have one guy wreak havoc on defense. You could totally have one guy wreak havoc. Every guy can get blocked. Aaron Donald break loose, sack the quarterback, you can win the game. You have one offensive lineman F up, the entire unit suffers. Missed the slip block, guy breaks underneath, guy makes a tackle for loss. Everyone else did their job, one guy didn't, the entire play shut down, right? Playing O-line is a lot tougher than playing D-line. You got to be more athletic on that side. But, dude, you can do your job completely. And one guy break down, it Fs the entire unit up. I think Lena Jurgens may have some growing pains to get through. Say Amalo and Brandon Brooks have been next to Lane for a long time. That's right, man. Dude, when you got the same group and you got the same dudes, remember what something, and I think maybe some of you have forgotten this. Remember what Lane said about Sayamalo, smartest player ever played with? Like you, you just can't ignore a comment like that. That, you know, you got a guy out of position and some of that, you know, when he missed that block or it seemed he missed that assignment in the New England game, I wonder if he was covering for Jurgens, because he blocked down. Jurgens went away, and there was a gap. The guy came up and sacked Hurts in the backfield, and it was he blocked down, and he saw he made the wrong call, and he ha- he had to get back out. It was too late. Now was that on him, or was it on he's covering for somebody because somebody may have missed their assignment? Remember, he's a brand new guy at a brand new position. He's a center. This is not high school football where you could plug a guy in anywhere. Okay? So, and again, I'm I'm not telling you the guy sucks. I'm telling you that when you got a, when you have a unit like you had last year, that every guy from right tackle to left tackle could be considered a pro bowler. And there's no flaws in your game across the board. You take one guy out of that cog, it's a different unit. It's a completely different unit. Okay? Nolan Smith should get more playing time. You got to earn playing time. Sills, did you hear Chris Sims said about... The tush play, he said, go for the quarterback's head. I understood what he meant. People who don't understand what he meant thought he meant it literally. I had no problem with what he said. None. I had no problem with it. I'd say the same thing. You got to take that guy out. Any means necessary. Do I actually mean give the guy a concussion and hurt the kid and want the guy permanently damaged? Absolutely not. 
Why do I have to explain that to people? Why do you really have to have that explained to you like that? Are you that much of a child that you need to have that explained to you that Sims didn't mean to give the guy a concussion? I hope I don't because you can't be that simple. There was a key block versus Tampa where the Bucks blitzed lane side with the DB. Jerkins slid and picked up the pass rusher in the B gap while Lane picked up the DB in the C gap. It shows their communication has taken a step forward. Okay. Especially with that group. Okay. Especially with that group because the Bucs did, like I said, that's a Super Bowl winning defense. They won a Super Bowl. I'm, I mean, that's a really good effort in running the ball versus the Bucs. Absolutely, man. You will not take anything away from that. Two years ago, that team won a Super Bowl with that group. They did a great job on them. James says, of course you didn't mind. James, go back to playing flag football. It's all good, man. It's okay. You know, you, you go play Nerf football. It's okay. I get it. It's all right. You know, or go to the library. Get your library card and it's all good, man. You know, go go check some books out or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey, just go to the library and check some books out. I don't know what else to say to you, man. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> no, like Tone said yesterday, you guys want these guys to be warriors, but you want to take the warrior out of the gladiator. Okay. <laughs> oh, dude! I don't root for anybody. I told you that. Good. <laughs> Crid Sim sucked at football. Yeah, that's why he got nine million, eighteen million dollars from the Bucks. The Bucks gave that guy eighteen million dollars after he threw for three hundred seventy-five yards with a ruptured spleen. Sims had a ruptured spleen, and he threw for three seventy-five for the Bucks. It wasn't great. Okay. He wasn't great. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, no way, Lucius. Half the room is soft. What's the library? From what I understand, it's a place you go and return your books. Like after you get them in college, you know, and then they pay you for like, you know, I don't know. Hey, every time I used to turn my books in, it used to have that one thing with all the books in it. You know, did you ever open it? Nah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Man, did you ever open it? Hey, here, hey, Tone, here was my here was my classroom. Always go here. Anybody who's going to school, here's a little bit of insight for from Big Sills to help you get through college. Always take a class that you have a blue book midterm final no attendance <laughs> and it's tiered <laughs> and you got about 200 kids in the class this is how i would do it. how many kids are in this class 150 perfect <laughs> hey hey tom blue book Perfect. Midterm, final. How many guys are in class? 250. Great. Sign me up. What is it? Genealogy. I don't care what that means. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't really care. Astronomy. Great. <laughs> hey, it sounds like blue book classes were so... Oh, are you kidding me? Fundamental... Fundamental wood shop. 300 people. Midterm final blue book. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> oh, love it, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got hey Neil, Neil. You guys went to classes at Miami? Neil. One horrible story 
about Big Sills at Miami getting caught cheating. Tone, I don't believe you've heard this one. <sighs> the wrath of Jimmy Johnson was horrific. I could, hey, Tyler, I could not pass statistics. I had all my requirements. I could not pass statistics. Okay. And th this is the guy that I ended up painting the fence with. So, but hang on, hang on. So I decided to do this. I'm writing all the answers because what they did was they gave you like a book and shit and told you what the answers were. You just had to remember them. I mean, complete jackass. I'm writing the numbers here, man. I got paper tied to me. I'm late to get to the class. There's only one chair left, and it's in the front, right in front of the teacher. So I'm, I'm sitting here like this in the front of the class. I got my hands on the desk because the shit's right under me. He's looking at me, and he goes, it, it was like a scene out of uh, Spies Like Us. You know that scene where they're in the, they're taking the test to become like um, spies or some shit? And the guy takes the shit out of his mouth and the teacher's looking at it and he's just going like this. And I'm just going like this. Oh my God, I think he got me. Sure enough, he goes, and I go, no. <laughs> I go, no. He goes, he goes, go like this. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> he goes like this. Okay. So I show up to practice that afternoon. Jimmy Johnson comes up to me and he goes, I just got a call from your statistics teacher, Gary Stevens. I go, y y yeah. He said that you got caught cheating. You usually get expelled for that. And um, I go, he had to go down there, kiss the guy's ass and the dean of the department. He comes back after this whole scene. I'm practicing. Oh. Start running. Where? I don't care where you run. Just start running. To where? I don't care if you run to downtown Miami. Just start running. I went... With my pads on, he goes, yeah. With my cleats, I don't care where you run. You could run on Miracle Mile. You could run. I don't give a shit if you run to the Everglades. <laughs> right, Neil? You could run to Cuba. I don't care where you go. And I went like this. I go, so you want? I go, start running. Or you'll never stop running. I go like this. I'm running down. Miracle Mile in my helmet and shoulder. <laughs> it must be 630 at night. I'm down. I'm getting into downtown Miami. Cadillac pulls up next to me. Get in the car. That was the, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Mr. Stats. Hey, it was a hey, it was a very interesting life, to say the least, at the University of Miami for Big Sills. That's a guy who had to go paint his uh, fence at the end of the day when he said, "Show up in shorts and a T-shirt and one of them Italian T-shirt things." I'm like, I'm not doing anything that would cause me to have to be embarrassed with myself. He goes, show up in shorts and I want to see an Italian t-shirt on you. I was like, listen, guy, I'm not doing anything. And you know, he goes, do you want to go to the festival? Yeah, but I'm not, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> oh man. All right. Enough with that. Huh. Hey, now you know what coach prime's going through, right? <laughs> oh man all right let's get into the games this coming week for week four oh god believe me 
my poor aunt and my grandmother and my grandfather had to put up with all that BS. <laughs> Do you want to go to the Fiesta Bowl? Sounds highly suggestive. <laughs> really? Tone, I didn't know what I was. I go, listen here. When I showed up the next day, it was 90 humidity, 98 degrees. There I am sitting with shorts like Daisy Dukes. And I'm going like this. Would I do that? <laughs> I really want to play in that bowl game. <laughs> hey, hey, don't. I, would, I really want to play in that bowl game. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I did do that. I, you know, I really want to play in this bowl game. How far will I go? <laughs> Uh, uh, hey, Football Friday. How you doing? Oh, God. It, let, okay. Hey, let me, let, let's me let do this with week four. Let's start off here. Please, let me get out of this. Oh, God. Before I cut my own throat. Or wait, that's probably too real for you, right? Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, how many people are buying the Lions now as a true contender? How many people are buying the Lions? Do you need to see a little more ball from them? Okay. Yeah, you know, Maxon, how about this? You're in Seattle, you lose an OT. You 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 win in Kansas City and you win at Lambeau. Are you kind of are you kind of sold that they're good? Yeah, you, you, you know what? Okay, thank you, Hollywood. Arthur goes, Lions look like a playoff team. Health and all that, you're playing with health? Yes. Yes. You know, I just, you know, let's see if they can learn to live with the hype, you know, and play with the hype and be, look, I don't think the Lions, I think the Lions are in Dallas's league right now. Dallas has got to show me, this is a big game against New England. Can I tell you? If Dallas goes in and beats the hell out of New England, I think it's in Dallas because they're honoring Zeke. If they beat the hell out of New England, that'll kind of put me back on track with them. But again, here, here. If Dallas beats New England up, will I trust them still? No, because Arizona is a bad taste. I don't know if you're... Am, am I right when I say this to you guys? Am I right when I say this to you about, about Dallas? Dallas has such a bad taste off that Arizona game. The only way that they're going to take that taste out of their mouth is if they win a playoff game that puts them in the NFC championship game. Is that fair? Right? Because Arizona's got to be, that's a, that's a dumb loss, man. Okay, that's a dumb loss. So I'm buying them. Atlanta, Jacksonville. I I can't think the Jags. I I can't think the Jags are gonna go to one and three on the season. I just I I don't see it. Um. It's in Jacksonville. Houston went in there and beat the doorknobs off them. I'm going to say they're going to play with some tightness in this game. Jacksonville bounces back versus Atlanta. I got this thing here at 27-21. Jacksonville. Here it is. Miami Buffalo in Buffalo. Buffalo has been playing great football since that Jets disaster. Miami has been putting on – some of you maybe – Tone, I think you will remember this. Is this the best offense we've seen since the greatest show on turf? See, I don't think that that's true because they don't have a Marshall Falk on their team. I mean, that team had two fabulous wideouts 
a running back and a quarterback, right? Um, Kurt Warner. Okay. You think this is a high scoring game? Get Vic Fangio versus Sean McDermott. I'm going to say 26-24 Buffalo. 26-24 Buffalo. I don't think that thing is going to be as high scoring as you think. Okay? It's in Jackson. It's in London. I didn't Okay, thank you Lucius. I didn't I didn't realize it was in London. Bills played three awful teams. Finns win 27-20. Denver at Chicago. Good night. Hey, do you agree if Russell Wilson doesn't put on a show versus Chicago, it's time to bench him? Do you agree? Right? He's got to put a show on here. Or I think Peyton benches him. Okay, so I'm going to say this. Chicago's terrible. 28-17. I'm going to take Denver in Chicago. Now, I don't know if Lamar Jackson is playing. He's, he's listed as question, Or is it Deshaun Watson that's listed as questionable? This week is... The Toy Story game. I think it's Watson who hasn't thrown a pass this week, right? I don't think it's Lamar. I think it's Watson. Raven wide receivers out with injury. OBJ and Batman. Browns may snag that win. Isn't it Watson, though, that was the guy that was that was questionable for the game? Right? So this just may be the battle of attrition here. And Watson may not, so it's Watson that may not play. If he plays, and I'm probably thinking he's going to play, he's got to play. Um, I'm going to go Cleveland because they still have that run game. Cleveland's got the second best offensive line in the NFL. Watson threw three passes all week in practice. Damn, man, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go Cleveland. 26, 24, and a close one. What's the record for Cincinnati right now? Is it one and two? Watson said he's playing great. Cincinnati, are they 0 and 2 or 1 and 2? They won. Oh, they won on Monday night. It beat the Rams. So they're 1 and 2. Can't go 1 and 3. Season's over in the AFC. It, it, they, they, they can't lose this game. Tennessee's going to run the ball at Cincinnati. And dude, Ryan Tannehill is like a swing. You know, he's like a seesaw. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Cincinnati on the road gets this win. You got to think, again, I guess the calf or the Achilles of Joe Burrow. I'll say 26 17. I'll go Cincinnati here. Rams in Indianapolis. From what I understand, Anthony Richardson's playing in this game, correct? What if Shane Steichen gets that team to three and one? Hey, I'm going to say this. I think it is possible with the Rams. How about this? If Shane Steichen gets that Colts team to three and one and the Eagle game's close and we're still talking about the offense being inconsistent, do we then start making the rounds on this one? Okay, Steichen's a loss. 
the size and upgrade. Would that be a narrative Monday? If 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 Washington game was close, I'm not saying it's gonna be. It should be 31-17. Okay, okay, it should be 31-17. But I don't think you got good play calling going on right now. So when we go like this, man, Shane Steichen, dude. Okay. You know that running back that they have in there? Didn't that kid Moss go for 100 yards last week? Didn't he go for 100 yards? Didn't they have a back last week go for 100 yards? Okay. Man, I don't don't know how the Rams are even. Good coaching. 23-21, 23-21, Indianapolis. Colts go to 3-1 and one on a year. One of the surprises of the season. I'm going to take the Colts at home. Tampa Bay has everybody hurt. I'm taking New Orleans in this. New Orleans always plays big against the Bucs. Don't ask me why it's gone on forever. 32-17. I'll take New Orleans. Minnesota, Carolina. Boy, Minnesota's terrible. Um, there's even talks of potentially trying to move. Ju- they're not moving Justin Jefferson. They're going to be in the market for another quarterback. Um, I'm going to take Carolina at home. 24-21. How about Pittsburgh, Houston? C.J. Stroud. How many people are sold on Kenny Pickett? I'm not. I don't think he's very good. I didn't think he was very good at Pitt. I, I don't think Kenny Pickett's good. Yeah, I think I'm with Tone on this one. I, I don't like Kenny Pickett. Okay? I just don't. So, I'm going to take the upset and take Houston here. Hey, how about the way uh, Ryan's is coaching that team? Good for him, man. Shitty roster, and he's winning. Good for him. That's spectacular. 28-14. I don't think Pittsburgh's offense is that hot. Raiders versus Rams. Hey, how about this one? So you're really going to play the Raider game at so high stadium? Let me get this right. The NFL thought it would be a good thing to put the Raiders in Los Angeles versus the home team Rams. Now, were you doing that Were you doing that because you thought it was a good matchup? Or were you doing that because you knew that the Raider fans are going to be 3-1 to at So High Stadium? I mean, you think, hey, there's not more Rams and Charger fans combined. than what the Raider fans have in L.A. There are more Raider fans in L.A. than Charger and Ram fans combined. you got to be crazy, man. I mean, dude, the Raiders are going to take that thing over, and it's going to be... I'm going to go with the Raiders in this one. And I'm going to take the Raiders... Is it, is it right? Is it Chargers? My bad. <clears throat> it's it's the Chargers, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Detroit receiver Jamison Williams had his suspension shortened. He'll be available. Wow, week five. Wow, 
Yeah, that's all the Lions now need. So Jamison Williams is coming back after week five. Wow. Okay. New England at Dallas. New England at Dallas. Who do you got in this game? Raiders play Chargers. Oh, my God. What a mess. That's a mess. Oh, my God. Dallas in a close one. Who do you got? Who do you got in this one? Give me a score. Give me a score for this one. New England, Dallas. Do I think Dallas... Do I think Dallas will confuse Dak Prescott more than they did Jalen? Yeah. I saw Jonathan Gannon do it. If Jonathan Gannon can confuse Dak, what's Belichick going to do? Don't you guys... See that? So Belichick confused Jalen. Jalen's a smart dude, man. Part of his great ability is how smart the guy is. You know, if I was going to talk about Jalen Hurts, I would start with how, how, how smart he is and all the things he does to all of that. He, you're not going to really confuse that dude. Okay. You may confuse the entire unit, but he's he's a I mean, but Jonathan Gannon, he he threw things at Dak he didn't see. I'm gonna do this. I think they're gonna run the ball on Dallas. Arizona did. New England, what New England was pretty good running the ball on Philly. And it wasn't great, but Dallas was trucked by a lesser team. I'm going to take New England. Eighteen sixteen. Dak has three turnovers. Dak has three turnovers. New England wins that game. Then you'll have holy hell to hear on Monday. Arizona, San Francisco, 38-10. San Fran. Kansas City Jets. So am I right? Tyler Swift's going to be there. <laughs> okay, so Tyler Swift's going to be there. That's an extra three points for KC. Might even be a seven-point love, Right? Kansas City, right? Can maybe seven? Hey, is Swift does does Taylor Swift give Kansas City seven or three versus the Jets? What, what do you think? How many? I, right. So I say KC. That's an extra seven. I don't know. Thirty nine. Seventeen. Seattle on Monday night versus the Giants. Twenty eight. Seven. Giants are frauds. All right. Dude, we're getting closer to ball, man. I can't wait for this weekend. Hey, man, I can't wait for Colorado. I'm going to tell you, too, what I think of that Colorado SC game. So get this, LeBron. Hey, did you guys hear this? LeBron James, Kevin Durant. Um, A bunch of the other superstar NBA guys are going to be on the sidelines I think Dion said half the NBA is going to be on the sidelines for this game. I mean, you're going to have every hip hop star and every NBA guy on the sidelines supporting Dion Sanders in Colorado. Man, 
do I want to play for Colorado? That's totally, that's so cool. Scott, you're missing it. Once again, Scott, you miss it. Colorado's mediocre. That's the point. You're a nationally televised game because of Dion Tiger Sanders. Hour number three. Do me a favor, guys. Our good friends, once again, over with Hooters, man. NortheastHooters.com. You got to do me a great favor. Please log on to NortheastHooters.com. Find one of the seven locations nearest to you and for you to experience what we've been talking about. By the way, if you don't want to go into any of the places, go HootersToGo.com. Also, enjoy our 40-year traditions. Like Tuesdays, buy 10 wings, get 10 boneless free. Wing Wednesdays, 1983, all you can eat. Kids eat for free on Saturdays. Specials they have, all the great happy hour specials. NortheastTutors.com. That's NortheastTutors.com to find one of the seven locations nearest you. Hour three coming up. Keep it here on the National Football Show. and Hooters, the perfect pair. If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. 267-261-3428. Heading down the shore. Here, imaginations run wild and time stands still. Because here, you can find the best of the Jersey Shore all on one five mile island. So leave the old you behind and get lost in the woods. Score and save at Southeastern PA in Delaware with Colony Pools this football season. And let the experts close your pool with a custom Merlin safety cover in green for the birds. And if you join our winter watch team, we'll give you another 20% off and Colony Pools will handle it all. Keep your tiles on your pool, not in your pool. Fly with Colony right now, birds fans. Visit flywithcolony.com. G-L-E-S Eagles Big Sills National Football Show Final hour of the program We appreciate everybody coming aboard here with us We're going to reset And also don't forget Our good friend The Philly Godfather will join us And give us his takes On what he sees happening this weekend as well Surprise upset New England with a big field goal I happen to agree Again, I want to go back a little bit and talk a little bit more about the game than how I see this thing playing out on Sunday here. Um, There is no – hey, we're not talking about – and and how I opened the show, I thought it was important for everyone to know. See, you guys go like this. It's three games. Okay. Well, I'm on Monday through Friday. 
We talk about in the present and what is today. What is now? Okay? You're talking to me about something that we have no idea in how it's going to look. Injuries, other teams playing well, other circumstances happening. We have no idea. You only can talk in the present. And so when you say those things, you're talking about things that we haven't even begun to be, even think about. Do you, Seals, do you think the team will play better in January? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. None. Again, being 3-0 and and being 2-1 and like the Cowboys, like, like check this out. Let, let's do this. Who do you think is playing better football right now, the Lions or the Cowboys? Who's playing better ball, Cowboys or Lions? By the way, the Lions get Jamison Williams back too after next week, right? I'm looking at what the Lions are doing right now. Awful impressive. Awful impressive in what they're doing. So I look at them and look at how they're playing and the places that they've gone to play, Arrowhead, Seattle, Lambeau. They're becoming battle-tested. They may get more out of that Seattle loss than actually that Green Bay win. But you know why the Green Bay win was important? How, why do you think a, a game like Green Bay is important to a team like Detroit? It's division. It's the team that's owned the division for the last 30 years. That's a big win for a team that hasn't won shit in 15 years. So, like, you're, like, going, well, it's early. That's a big win for Detroit. Detroit has two signature wins on their schedule right now and in their win column. Beating the defending champions, which you haven't for two straight games. And going to their nemesis, the Green Bay Packers, and turning Lambeau into Ford Field North. That's a big win for them. That's right. Tone's like division win. Road win at Lambeau. Gigantic win. Like here. Like, I would, I would say this to you. Washington, if they were, that, that win by Washington last year was a gargantuan win for the commanders. A gargantuan win. Huge win. That's why these games, like here, do we all agree when you see a win like last night and you see the Lions winning? How many people look at that Arizona win? And I'll tell you what, I really don't care what the Dallas Cowboys do the rest of the way out. I'll never trust them right now. And I picked that team to go to the Super Bowl, and I'm still going to go like this. I don't know. Because that's a team that can break your heart all the time. Once again, the complete difference between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys was last week. You'll never get around that. The Eagles don't lose games like Arizona. This is why when Tone and everybody, they go like this about Dallas. Man, Dallas got a lot of talent. Dallas has got a lot of things going for them. Then they lose Arizona. Philly's not losing Arizona. Okay, it might, and by the way, it could be a different dynamic when Kyler Murray comes back. I think they play them later in the year. Okay, but Phillies, Phillies, dude, 
they're going through guardrail hits right now. They're hitting guardrails to three and zero still. I grant you that's the most important thing in this. You know what's crazy? The Eagles may get more out of this rock, rocky opening here a little bit offensively. And you know what it's done? It's put heat and it's given a part of the defense and a part of that side of the ball that they can do this. You're building momentum for the Eagle defense right now. Do you get that? You're helping their mindset. Hey, man, we're winning because we're running the ball and we're playing defense. We thought we knew they could run the ball. We didn't know they could play defense right away because of all the losses. And especially the way the first two teams threw for 350 yards on you. I mean, despite how ugly it was, I feel the Eagles win over the pay- – That's it's becoming a better win. If you're the Eagles, you're fighting against week one wild cards, road win at Gillette Stadium. Brady was there. Weather. Plus Belichick. I think Dallas is going to have to fight those dynamics too. But see, Dallas doesn't win against those dynamics. There's no question. I agree with you on this point about Dallas. I completely do. The Cowboys are untrustworthy. But they're not untrustworthy versus you. That has always been my... That has always been my point about the Cowboys. Would I trust the Dallas Cowboys in a conference championship game versus the Niners? No. Would I trust them in a conference title game versus New Orleans? No. Would I trust them versus the Eagles? Yes. Because they have had success versus you. Batman goes, we split last year. Did you? Did you really? Okay. Okay. Is that how you want to look at it? Dex eight and three, and he threw for five TDs versus the number two defense in the NFL. Jalen Hurts doesn't play defense. He lit you up for 300 and some odd yards in that game and five touchdowns. It was one of his most productive touchdown games of his career versus your top defense. He destroyed you. Actually, the last few games that he's been in, albeit they took out all the starters the year previous to, I mean, they've been non-competitive. That's not untrue. But again, that's all good and all, right? But, but at the end of the day, so you're telling me that game in Dallas was against all the Eagle backups last year when Dak threw for five touchdowns? That was all the backups? I don't remember it that way. Maybe I'm wrong, was it? Did you have all your backups in that game in Dallas? When he threw for five touchdowns? I must have missed that. A lot of injuries? No excuses for that. It's part of the game. It's like when you hear these people talking about why you lost the Washington game. Well, it was our turnovers. So what? That's a you thing. So like, according to some of these guys, but Jalen controls game temple that would have helped our defense. It would have, I I guess. Well, Rafi Nadal wasn't playing against Roger Federer. It would have been a completely different French Open. That's not a Federer thing. That's a Rafi Nadal thing. How is that on Federer if you're not there? Well, he won against a lesser guy. Sorry, that's a you thing. Dude, you can't make excuses and put asterisks next to shit when you know that the war of attrition is also part of the equation on who's going to win a Super Bowl this year. Or any year. You cannot do that. You know better than that. Not gonna, I'm not going to debate that either. That's a you thing. 
Yeah, you're right. When he threw five TDs, all the starters were in week 18. That, uh, that was week 18? Okay. Now, again, I agree with um, with one of our guys what he said. Seals, don't you think that, though, game tempo would have changed if Jalen was in there versus Minshew? There would have been less three and outs. Yeah, I do. Score would have been closer. I do. Okay, I do. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. I do. Okay. Absolutely. Um, our friend Philly Godfather is going to join us at the bottom of the hour here. How I see this game one more time on Sunday. Commanders are two and one. Um, again, but here's going to be a team like the Bucks. This is a whole different upgrade. Well, Buffalo last week. See, I think the Buffalo game gave them a taste of what a good roster looks like. And they're going to have they're going to have to up their game because Buffalo's playing good football. And Buffalo's a good team. And so that game when they got killed, what was the score? I mean, they got annihilated in that game. 37-3, does that sound right? <clears throat> They're going to be prepared going into conversations with the coaches going like this. Damn, dude, we can't play like that. We have to up our game because Philly's right in there with the Bills. They're, they're right. when, when you don't know what championship team speed looks like, and I'm not saying they don't because they beat them last year at full pace with a full roster and Jalen. So they do know. But now, like you guys say, this is a new year, Big Sills. Okay, this is this is a new year here. Right? Um, they got thrashed though by the Bills. And how was 19 to 29, 170, QBR 41.5. I'll tell you what, Sean McDermott's done a hell of a job being the D coordinator, especially off that game one disaster. He's done a nice job taking the reins and play calling. He's really done a nice job. Senior goes like this. Josh Allen threw for 218 yards. Relax. Josh Allen's playing MVP football, dude. Okay. He's playing MVP football. And they, and, and quite frankly, that was great coaching because they ran the ball here. Get this for 168. I don't even know who the running back is. I have no idea who Buffalo's running back is. And according to Pro Football Focus, Buffalo's offensive line, it's middle of the road, middle of the pack. Well, you're going to get your chance. You have yet to beat an elite quarterback. Let me see. Last elite quarterback was Rodgers last year. Um, and the last year and the last year and three games. Let's see. The 2021 year, you didn't beat one elite guy. Uh, 22, you beat Rodgers. Trevor Lawrence. And that's it. Don't talk to me about elite guys you've beaten because you haven't. Um, and what's crazy about the Bills, Bills had 5-1 a carry against... Look at the money that if you're Washington, you spent on that front four. Hey, by the way, has um, anybody been watching Chase Young? How has he been playing? Tone, have you seen how he's played? All you do, Chris, is win what? What do you win, Chris? You're like the Braves. Yeah, that's a good comparison. 
Do you know what the Philadelphia Eagles are? The Braves. The John Smoltz and Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox Braves. Yeah, you're the Braves. You're the Bobby Cox Braves. They got a title. Ton of division titles. Ton of playoff wins. One title. Okay. You're the Braves. Nothing wrong with being the Braves. Nothing wrong with being the Braves. So far, Chase Young has one and a half sacks, six tackles, two quarterback hits, two TFLs. Is that good, Tone? I don't know. Is that how, how does that one and a half sacks in three games? I don't know. Does that sound like average? I mean, I, does that sound does that sound good? I, I I mean, let me look at those again. Six tackles, one and a half sacks. Two quarterback hits, two TFLs. Is that good? I I don't know. They gave up 20 completions in the secondary. Look, I'm going to tell you one more time here. Okay? I'm going to tell you guys one more time. This is a... 31 17 game. But if you have turnovers, and, and Tone corrected me on the penalties. And if you if you turn the ball over like you did in that game, that second game, this is 28 20 game. That's how I see this. This looks like a 28 20 type of game um, on this here. For comparison, Josh Sweat has one and a half sacks, seven total tackles, six QB. So he's in line with – so Chase Young's in line with Josh Sweat. Okay. Sweat's a fourth-rounder, though. <laughs> hey, right? All right, man. I could not wait to get my friend on. He is the Philly Godfather. Okay? He is the Philly Godfather. Here he is, brother. What's up? Dan, what's going on, brother? All right. Let me ask you this there, my man. <laughs> Did that Arizona loss make you waver a little bit on the Cowboys? Nah, they went into that game so banged up. I mean, they should have they should have they should have won the game. You look at the box score, they kind of won the box score, but they, there were so many brain cramps. What what worried me the most was Dak Prescott and his brain cramps in that game. The team was just, you know, they're missing three offensive linemen, they're missing their best corner. Uh, when they get healthy again, they're going to still be dangerous. But, you know, when you're a 12 and a half point favorite, you should win the game. And Arizona's feisty, man. They could be 3 and 0. They were in all three games to start the season. People are underestimating this team. And their coach has done a great job. And even though they're 1 and 2, they, like I said, they could be 3 and 0. So they're, they're a very pesky team. This week, they're catching 14 points against the 49ers. But, yeah, it's disappointing to see the Cowboys lose, especially when you're holding a futures ticket on them. But when a team's banged up like that, and some of my biggest wagers have been against teams that are missing two offensive linemen, and the Cowboys are really banged up on that offensive line. So it, it didn't really surprise me much. Mike Gullick was on earlier, and he called the Eagle offense one-dimensional, or I'm paraphrasing it, one-dimensional and one read. And he said that he echoed what I thought. You can't win a Super Bowl right now with that style of play. Now, will it turn around? 3-0, and I get it, all that. But still – I mean, this has got to be the week, right? We see that offense click into gear here against Washington. I mean, I hope so. If you look at Washington's numbers, they're some of the worst in football. They're 21st in yards per play on offense. On defense, they're 27th in opposing yards per play. The thing that's keeping them around in these games is their sack percentage. Their, their defensive line, they're sixth in the league in sack percentage. And that could cause Jalen Hurts some problems. You saw what the Patriots did. Uh, and to be honest, I mean, I, it's great to be 3-0, and and this was really like the first clean victory the Eagles had all season. But it was against a team that was supposed to win six games on the season. I mean, before the season started, me and you were debating who's going to be the worst team, Tampa Bay or Arizona. So it's not like you really beat a, a good team. You beat two teams with expected uh, projected regular season win totals at eight with the Patriots and the Vikings. 
and now you beat a six and a half win team. I mean, you got to beat these bad teams, but I wouldn't be too excited. Uh, the Eagles, I mean, their numbers, they're 11th in yards for playing offense. Uh, the run game, that offensive line is really carrying them. Uh, when you go up against a defensive line that can stop the run, they're going to have some issues. Are you buying Detroit? I want to I want to show you this on Detroit. I mean, that game wasn't really close last night against the Packers, and it was at Lambeau. Look at the Lions here. They go into Seattle, lose a game in OT. They win a game in Kansas City on the road against the defending champion Chiefs. They, and they win at Lambeau. I mean, so you go to Seattle, tough place. You win at Arrowhead, tough place. You win at Lambeau. Are you buying them now? Now, word is Jamison Williams is going to be ready to go after week five here. Well, they got some key components back last night. and The Packers were missing two offensive linemen. I mean, it's all about your offensive line. Can you protect your quarterback? You saw how fast that Detroit Lions pass rush was getting to the backfield. So if you can't protect Love, uh, he's going to have some issues, and you saw that early. The Lions are for real. I mean, they're stacked. You saw what they did last year. They almost snuck in the playoffs, and I think they got better. They played for their coach, Campbell, and this is the team that's supposed to win the, the, you know, the NFC North, and I don't see anyone else beating them. The Bears stink. I mean, the Packers are, you know, they're okay, and when, when they're healthy, they're going to contend a little better than they did last night, but the Lions are definitely the team to beat in that division. Who would you rather be coached by, kneecap Dan Campbell <laughs> <laughs> or a uh, 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 fan waving and cheerleader Nick Sirianni. Dan Campbell, man. Dan Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> He's a football. He's a real football. Look at him on the field. I Look know the expressions man. he makes. I mean, you know, Sirianni looks like that cocky kid we used to beat up when yeah. he was little. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Dan Campbell. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Nick, Nick Sirianni is the guy you smash with the uh, dodgeball in the gym, and Dan Campbell's the guy you pick yeah. first or second, right? Yeah. And even after you smash Sirianni, he's still talking smack on you. Know, like those guys. <laughs> he's Italian, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like him now. Not, not to bother. I mean, Sirianni, you can't argue with success, man. And no matter what you think about him, the guy keeps winning. So God Dude, bless him. I, you know what? <laughs> he, he's had some – he, he's really had some games that really makes you turn the corner on him, on him being a coach, winning at Arrowhead, and then crushing that Packer team up there at at Lambeau. I mean, I'm, I'm starting to like the kneecap guy. I really am. I mean, I think – I like. hey, get this. Just to show you how weird I am, I like the kneecap guy and Mike McDaniel, the, the weirdo guy with the Hello Kitty backpack that yeah. shows up to, like, uh, team meetings. He drives a Tesla and, like, you know, he's, he's got a – if you remember before the season started on your show, I gave him out to become uh, coach of the year this year at 20 to one. So it's looking good so far. He's the favorite now. It's down to four to one, but it's still a long season. And as we all know, injuries, man, they play such a major role on who gets, you know, into the playoffs, who gets to the Super Bowl. Last year, the Eagles and Chiefs were two of the healthiest teams in the NFL, and they got you, they got there. This year, it might be a little different. Yeah, man, I, I don't know if you could trust a guy with a backpack from Hello Kitty. I don't know. <laughs> all right, let's get to the Sunday games here. Atlanta at Jacksonville. Surely Jacksonville turns this thing back around again and squares that record up to two and two, right? Or do you think there's more issues there? Man, I mean, they have to. If they go one and three, they're in trouble in that division because the Colts with Richardson look a lot better than we thought. The Texans with Stroud, who's lighting up the league, he might become offensive player of the, the year this year. I think he's second favorite as of right now behind Robinson, the running back. Uh, it's tough. I mean, I think it's a coin flip. The game's a coin flip. The Jags never perform well overseas. Uh, lane three, I, I don't know, man. Both these teams are in the basement of the NFL in points per game. I think one's averaging 18, the other one's averaging 19. Anytime you get a coin flip, if you can grab the three and a half, if it's still out there, I'd probably take Atlanta plus three and a half. I'm not touching the game, but, yeah, this is just ugly, man. I mean, I mean, it's just an ugly game, especially with weather. They're expecting some wind. And some rain over there. So that could, you know, anything can happen in that type of weather. Plus, it's the land of fish and chips. I don't eat either. All right. <laughs> <laughs> not for me, man. And anytime that you have a dish called cold dick, I'm not interested in anything from Monday. <laughs> you get over there happening. once. It was raining, it was windy, and the food. Yeah, no cool. way, man. They, they got a dish over there called cold dick. They tried man, serving cool. it to me when I played a game. Over cool, there. Man. And I'm like, not happening, man. I'm not, that's not working for me. All right, game of the weekend here, man. Maybe, right? Yeah. Miami and Buffalo in Buffalo. <laughs> who do you like? I kind of like the under. 
I mean, call me crazy. You got two great offenses. But if you look at the AFC Divisional games this season that's been played, they scored a combined 25, 38, and 41 points in those games. And Buffalo's got a pretty good defense. Uh, you saw what happened with Miami played the Patriots, who the Patriots also have a pretty good defense. Um, you know, the whole world's going to be betting the over here. And I think the whole world's betting Miami. I kind of like Buffalo. It, it, they can't afford to go 0-2 in the division. And they can't afford to get, get two games behind the Dolphins. This is the, I don't want to say it's like a do-or-die game for Buffalo, but they really need this game big time to stay in pace with, with, with the Dolphins here. I like Buffalo minus – Two and a half. I think I think they won the game. Yeah, I got Buffalo with two game, two um, two points too. I think a 27-24 game, something like that at home. Um, the game that hey, dude, this game right here, I don't even I mean, I I, I think I'd rather watch Boise State versus San Jose State, but Denver <laughs> versus Chicago. I mean, surely this has got to be the game Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson, right? I mean, you hope so. The spread's three on the road, so you expect them to win. I think the opening line was like one, one and a half. It's moved to three. So there's some money on Denver here. Chicago's just a mess. I mean, that that everyone's blaming, you know, the coaches and, and the GM and all the players. It, it, it's like they're a bunch of crybabies, and they're blaming everyone else but themselves for their for their own play. Justin Fields, I mean, is he the next Trey Lance? Is he gone? I mean, can the kid play? I, I'm not even sure he can play anymore. So the Bears are a mess. I talk to my buddy Kaplan out in Chicago every week, and he always tells me, whatever you do, don't invest no money on the Bears. So I'm not touching the Bears here at all. I, I, I don't know what's worse right now, Shape, the FBI in our country or the Bears. <laughs> 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 all right, let's go to another big Wait, game. I thought FBI standing for full-blooded Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Baltimore – at Cleveland, and it looks like Watson, Tone says Watson's going to play. He said that he's going to play. He's thrown two or three passes all week long. Baltimore's banged up two in the wide receiving court going into this. Who do you like in this one? This is a tough one, man. Um, you saw the Ravens last week. They couldn't win the game as an eight-point favorite against the Colts. I know they were really banged up last week. This week they're still banged up. Baltimore's got one of the better pass defenses in the league. I think they're top five. So uh, I had Watson having a big game last week against Tennessee because their pass defense was kind of, you know, kind of weak. I think they were ranked 29th in the league this year. This week, the Ravens' pass defense is going to give us some issues. But that defense on the Browns, I mean, number one in opponent yards per play, number one in opponent uh, passing yards per attempt, number two in opponent yards per rush attempt. This defense can win the game by themselves. I don't even think they need Watson to be 100% healthy. The, lane, the, the line went from three down to one and a half after the news of Watson maybe not playing, but he's going to play. Uh, this is going to be a battle. I, I, if anything, I like the Browns on the money line. I think it's going to be like a one-point game. I think the team that has the ball last kicks a field goal is probably going to win it. Low-scoring game. The total went from 44 down to 39. Uh, both these defenses are pretty good. You got some banged-up guys on the offensive side of the field for Baltimore, so I'm not expecting a lot of points. I think, I think the Browns pull this out. Love these two quarterbacks in this game, too. Um, Cincinnati, Tennessee. You know, Tennessee, it, it's so well coached by Mike Vrabel. He's such a good coach. You know, you know the thing about him? He may not have the top talented roster every week, Godfather, but you know what he does? They're always ready to play. They're always – and you know what? People call Tannehill out. The guy who calls Tannehill out the most is the coach. And here you got Cincinnati. I mean, you like you said – in the AFC, you can't fall to one and three here like the Jags. Do they square it up going into Tennessee and into Nashville and get that record to two and two? Yeah, it's never easy playing in Nashville, especially with a coach like Vrabel. Uh, but you saw Joe Burrow, even though he's limping around a little bit, he's still not 100%. You saw what he did to that pass defense last week, and the Rams' pass defense is a lot better than this Tennessee's pass defense. Like I mentioned earlier, I think they're 29th in the league in opponent yards per pass attempt. You saw Deshaun Watson have a big game. His – his yardage last week was 235 and a half, and I think he threw for like 270 or 2, 280. I think Burrow has a big day. Uh, I like the Bengals here. Anything under a field goal. I think, they, I think they win the game. They get the 2-2, two and two and they cover the spread. Rams at Indianapolis. Um, you know what's crazy about this one here? You know, Godfather, I'll tell you what. Can you believe it? If Shane Steichen gets a 3-1 and one, and Anthony Richardson's playing in this thing. And that kid Moss had 100 yards last week. And supposedly next week, they're getting Jonathan Taylor back too. Boy, I'll tell you something, man. 
could be one of the early coaching surprises. And the way the offense is sputtered in Philly, you'd start making this narrative if the Washington game, you still see that offense sputtering, that Shane Steichen was a huge loss um, in that play calling. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you see, and, and Richardson said he's going to play. I, I'm pretty sure he's playing. So that makes the world of difference here. The, the public's all over the Rams here. I think 75% of the tickets already are placed on the Rams in the market. I talked to guys offshore and in Vegas. Uh, now, most of the money comes in on game day, but that's that's a huge tilt on the ticket count already. So no one no one's expecting the Colts to do anything here. I kind of like the Colts at home here. I think they can beat this Rams team. I, I mean, do too. I yeah, and that pass rush, that defense is pretty good on this Colts team. I, I think they got a shot. I like the Colts at home. You know, New Orleans always at home versus Tampa Bay. Tom Brady had problems with Dennis Allen's defense. And, you know, New Orleans at home, they always play big at home. Is this a big day for Derek Carr in New Orleans versus the Bucs, who are banged up going into this? Yeah, he's a little banged up going into this. But, I mean, but the Buccaneers, you know, they came out, they were cute 2-1, and one, but we all know what they really are. I mean, if they, if they win six games this season, they're going to be lucky. That Saints defense is for real. Hold on, man. The, the Eagle fans will tell you they're a 12-5 and five team. <laughs> 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 we're winning the Super Bowl. We beat the Bucs. <laughs> I don't see Tom Brady walking through that door. That ain't the same Bucks team, man. I'm sorry to break it to you. Now, I like the Saints here. Hey, if you get anything under a field goal, right now it's around three and a half. You might be able to get like a minus three juice at minus 115. Uh, I like the Saints. I, I think they win the game, cover the spread kind of easily. Okay. I didn't ask you what the score was, Washington, Philly. <laughs> um, I'm hearing it's eight. Um, it's in Philly. What do you got here? For this one here, it's at, it's up to nine and a half. It's probably going to go to the, closer to ten. The whole world. Oh, so you think it hits ten by game day? It's nine and a half already, and and as bad as Washington looked last week, I mean they got they got the doors blown off by they the did get this too. What's crazy? Hey, last week Buffalo ran the ball for 170 yards on 33 attempts at five one a clip. They gave 20 completions up, but again, here's the same defense and the same coaching staff that beat a healthy Eagles team last year and beat them at full strength. I mean, yeah. there's Rivera yeah. and Del Rio and B because it's a division opponent and it's a short work week. Does that play into it or do the Eagles just blow them out on Sunday? It's tough. It's a division game. I mean, you're laying nine, 10 points in a division game. It's never easy to cover. And last year, Commanders came in as 11-point underdogs and won the game outright. So you saw anything can happen. This year, I don't think their uh, rush defense is as good as it was last year. They're 20th right. in the league in opponent yards per rush atten- uh, opponent yards per rush on the defensive side of the ball. So they've ha- they're having problems stopping the run. And once the Eagles, you know, realize that you can't stop the run, they're just going to run the ball down your throat. They're going to limit your possessions on offense. Now they do still have a good pass rush, so that should give hurt some problems. Uh, and he has made some mistakes this season against some defenses that really aren't that great, other than the, you know the Patriots. But those other two teams, the Vikings and Buccaneers, their defense, you know, you know, he has the same other. numbers as how. Yeah, I mean, it's not he ha- he hasn't really you know he got that big contract, and it seems like his numbers are going the wrong way. But uh, it's a lot of points. If it gets to ten, I'm you know I hate to say it, but you're you're. You're buying into an inflated price here with the Eagles. I mean, this line should really be seven, seven and a half at the most. If it gets to 10, the value's on the commanders. Now, that doesn't mean the Eagles don't go in there and blow them out. But in this business, it's all about the price. And you're always look, looking to get the best of the number. And at plus 10, I would have to be on the commanders. I, w- I would say this to you, that to me it looks like a 31-17 game. But because these divisional games and how they play out and how the coaching has been on the offensive side, and the inconsistency, it kind of looks like a 28-20 game to me. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm caught in the middle. And I'm saying Eagles win, but like you said, you get north of nine or ten points, yeah. the value's in the pick with the commanders. Yeah, the back door is always open in, in these divisional games. How many yeah. times have we watched a team up by 14, 15, 16, laying 10, and then you get a trash touchdown at the end and they don't cover the spread, especially with the betting public. Everyone and their mother and their aunt Bertha is going to be betting the Eagles this week, and that's never a, a good thing if you're looking to back a team. Well, just always remember, man. Just when you know your passing game's not going, hand it off, and you look like Woody Hayes is like Ohio State Buckeye teams <laughs> running. That's what I thought I was watching against the Bucks. I thought I was getting ready for like Archie Griffin and them guys running the ball back in the day versus Michigan. <laughs> not much of a passing attack. Minnesota, Carolina. Um, 
you know, I kind of like Carolina. I guess Bryce Young is playing. Dude, Minnesota sucks defensively. I, I, I mean, do you stay away from a game like that? You know, it's funny. They're so bad defensively, and they've they have a negative seven turnover differential on the season. The Vikings. But if you look at the yards per play, I think they're in the top five. Their offense is strong. As long as they don't turn the ball over, they probably kill Carolina here. They need a win so bad. I mean, let's be honest. You know, you start off with, <laughs> with no wins on the season going into the fourth week. You're, you know, everyone's in trouble. So I kind of like the Vikings here. I think they can move the ball in this Carolina defense. I know Carolina's at home. But like I said, they're top five in yards per play metric on offense. And if they don't turn the ball over, they cover the spread. Now, if they go in there and turn the ball over three, four, five times like they have been, then they got no shot of winning the game or covering the spread at all. A couple more games left here. Now, I don't know who thought this was smart, but you got the Raiders going into Los Angeles at So High Stadium versus the Chargers. I mean, Godfather, you could take the Charger fan base and the Ram fan base and find <laughs> them, and you're not going to have the silver and black people they're just going to absolutely take over so high stadium. And I don't know what that means. You know, the Rams have been kind of a surprise, but then again, they got a really great coach. Do you know that Sean McVay still the youngest coach in the NFL? And he's been in the league, like almost nine years now. He's one of the best. I mean, let's be honest. He took that Rams team to the Super Bowl. Uh, he's, you know, he, he, he comes up with different schemes this year. This Rams team wasn't supposed to do anything. And they've been competing in almost every game. So he's a, he's one hell of a coach. Okay, here's your boys. New England at Dallas. It's Dak Press. No, it's not. No, it's Zeke being honored in some form or fashion at AT&T. How do you see this bad puppy? It's a lot of points, seven points. I like the Patriots. The Cowboys are still banged up on their offensive line until they get 100% healthy. Uh, the look-ahead line was minus four. Now it's been inflated to seven because the Cowboys have looked pretty good after three weeks. Now I know they lost last week, but that's a big number. The Patriots, they, they played the Eagles tough. They played the Dolphins tough. They went in there. They beat the Jets, and they covered the number. I like the Patriots here, plus seven. Arizona at the best team in the NFC, San Francisco 49ers. Who do you got here? Is this a big one here for San Fran? It's a 14-point spread, man. It's Holy little- cow. Yeah. That's a big I might number. take the Cardinals on that one. That's a big number. That's a big number. But, you know, you're coming off a big emotional win that nobody expected. They might be smelling themselves a little bit. But I think they're well coached, uh, and they've been in every game. Like I said, Arizona could be 3-0. and Now they're 1-2, and two, but it took a miraculous comeback by the Giants, and they were in that first game against the Commanders. So I, ugh, this one's tough. It's just that San Francisco is so well coached. They're so efficient on the football field, man. uh, That's a tough one, man. Uh, Gun in my head, I'd probably probably take San Francisco here, but it it wouldn't surprise me if Arizona covers the spread. Okay, two games left. This last one, though, has – the second to last one has a a little sidebar bet. Over under, Taylor Swift (laughs) stays with Travis Kelsey a year – or under. What is the over under on that? Dude, I'll take the alternate line. Under three months plus 600. <laughs> a year. That's like an eternity for these performers and movie stars and rap artists and singers. A year. There's no way. So you think you think this thing with Tyler's, Taylor Swift? 90 days, tops. Under a year. It's like a DUI. You got to go do 90 days and you're done. Ah. <laughs> uh... This guy's going to be back on Tinder swiping right. (laughs) Kansas, hey, plus she's going to be there, so I'm assuming that that's got to be some points here for Casey. Is is it even real? Like, is it is it a stage relationship? I don't know. I I I have no idea what I. So, like, what? It's like a mail order. Like, I don't even. I don't even know what song she sings. I'm like, I'm not a big. Swift fan, you know. Hopefully, they're happy. They fall in I, love and have some beautiful kids. I really oh, don't man. care. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously, I could care. Less. Kansas City at the Jets. Jets got a good D, dude. Yeah. They go in there and do the job on them. I don't think so, man. It's a lot of points. It's up to nine. If I can grab ten, I'll take the Jets plus ten with that defense. As of right now, like ninety percent of the tickets placed are on Kansas City. The whole world's betting Kansas City, like they got the next day's newspaper, and they're a little banged up. Let's be honest, the Chiefs are a little banged up. And the Jets' defense, man, they're, they're, they're strong. Uh, 
I'm not looking to bet the game, but at plus 10, you know, I'm leaning towards the Jets. You know, And I, I didn't give you the, the pick on the Chargers and uh, Raiders game. I like the Chargers. I think they blow the Raiders out this week. Huh, okay, okay. Finally, here's – dude, the Giants are frauds, right? <laughs> well, that's what the NFL always makes you think, right? This team Correct. is horrible. They're frauds. Plus, it's a trip across the country. <laughs> you know, it's a you know, you got to come across the country here. Yeah, yeah Seattle's going – I mean, Seattle, the line went from Pickham. Seattle's minus one and a half now. Total's 47. Both pass defenses are probably the worst in the NFL. I think they're ranked like 27th and 28th. I think they score a ton of points. I think it goes over 47. I mean, you can flip a coin here. I don't know. Giants, you know, they might surprise some people. And this is another game where the betting public, I know it's early, but they're going to be all over Seattle here. No one's looking to bet the Giants. But if you look at that San Fran game, it was, there was they made some mistakes. There was a couple deflected passes that went San Fran's way. Now San Fran's a lot better, and more efficient, but they're not as bad as they've looked. I don't think they're as bad as they've looked. If the game gets to three, then I'll be looking to take the Giants at home plus three. I'm only going to do one college game here. You know, Colorado USC. USC has no defense. Um, but I think they have enough talent on the defense to stop Colorado, but there's going to be a lot of points put up. Are you are you looking? I mean, is this more of an over under kind of game and points scored? Because I look, I, I I think SC wins this game because they're just better. Okay, but I don't know, man. I mean, if you don't play defense and you have an offense and a powerful offense like Colorado, yeah. that's going to keep you in the game. I mean, the total seventy four points. They're expecting a ton of points in this. Game. Wow, yeah, it's probably going to keep going up. Uh, but USC, I see, two, I, I see like a 45-40 game. They're, they're two and two against the spread. They really haven't been covering the number. They played some teams that, you know, their projected regular season win total was like four and a half, five and a half, four, three. They really haven't played any good teams now. You know, is Colorado that much better? They're they're right now their adjusted regular season win totals at five and a half, but at least they have an offense. They got a pulse. Uh, you got you're playing in high altitude there in Colorado, right? So they have you know, a built-in home field advantage that's a little slightly better than any other team in college football. Uh, man, this is tough. At Anything under 21, I, I'm leaning towards USC, but right now it's a 21 and a half. If it, if it gets to 24, I think you got to look to play Colorado here, man. I mean, USC hasn't been outperforming the market. As good as they look, I think Washington's better than they are. Oh, I, they are better. They're going to win the Pac-12. Yeah, and, and we bet them at the beginning of the year at 5-1 to one to win the Pac-12. Pac, but uh, it's right there. The number's right there, man. But I, I'm leaning towards Colorado a little bit if it gets to 24. But as of right now, anything under 21, i probably like USC. Well, the man who has roots going back to Athens versus the Italian stallion over here. Hey, yo. We got it going on here, man. Tell the folks how they can find you this weekend and where they can get all your great stuff. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Philly Godfather. You can stop by the phillygodfather.com. And we got our show on Sirius XM, Sports Grid, and Jacob Sports, the sports betting show. So make sure you guys check it out. Thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great weekend, guys. You got it. That is Philly Godfather. Hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Ball and Hooters, the perfect pair.
If you own a company and you're not producing a podcast, you're missing out. The public consumes messaging when they're ready. Join the professional podcast network of companies and let Jacob Media Partners put you in the podcast arena. Come to our professional studio or we'll come to your place of business and professionally produce your company podcast. Call Jacob Media right now at 267-261-3428. Heading down the shore. Here, imaginations run wild and time stands still. Because here, you can find the best of the Jersey Shore all on one five mile island. So leave the old you behind and get lost in the woods. Score and save at Southeastern PA in Delaware with Colony Pools this football season. And let the experts close your pool with a custom Merlin safety cover in green for the birds. And if you join our winter watch team, we'll give you another 20% off and Colony Pools will handle it all. Keep your tiles on your pool, not in your pool. Fly with Colony right now, birds fans. Visit flywithcolony.com. G-L-E-S Eagles Two guys are so tough We're in the entertainment business Oh, okay, really? <laughs> um, Have to be factual You have to be right Because it's so important to be right <laughs> Yeah, okay. You think mainstream media today is right? Um, here, let me come up with something. There was a president or a guy at one time who was in Russia where a couple chicks urinated on him and hey, that sounds like a good story. Write it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's just hey shit, we'll we'll turn it into news. That's entertaining, though, actually. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So let's see some scores here. Let's see some scores for the game on Sunday. Okay. Maniac, you're awesome, brother, and I appreciate you so much. Um, Here, give me a score. What did Tone say? He said it earlier. What would you have here, Tone? What was that score you had? Was it did I see 3120 something like that you had? I think he had 3120. Was it or 3520 did you? 3421. Okay. 3117 2810. I like that. I like that 2810. Um 31-18. I think, cause, like I said, if they play a great game, it's 31-17. I'm with you, Mateo. But I don't think they're going to play a great game. I think they're going to play an effective game. No turnovers, nothing crazy, because they don't have – they don't – here – Washington has to be exceptional, right, to beat them. They have to do – well, they weren't exceptional last year. It was the Eagles who came undone. I don't think you're going to get another performance like that again. And I can't think this trend continues. Because I'll tell you this. If the, if the trend continues on offense come Monday morning, you've got a long way to go this year. And that thing – I don't know how it gets turned around. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because of the kid. So I'm going to say this, and if I'm picking, 
either 28-20, 31-17. So I'm going to kind of go in the middle in there. And I like that 28-10 score. 35-9. Um, I'm going to go 28-10. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang on that 28. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to say 28-10 Philly. Hurts 250 in the air, 50 on the ground. Swift goes for another 120. How about, how about Goddard gets going here to get him going? 95 yards, something like that. No turnovers. And the defense does a really good job stopping the run. And making Sam Howe. Sam Howe can't beat them. Sam Howe cannot beat them. They, he, they cannot. By the way, I've got 45-42. I changed my tune on that SC Oregon game. I got Tom, what do you think? Oregon uh, USC. I got 45-20. Southern Cal. I just think they're a little better. I think that's going to be a hell of a football game. In a must-watch game. The entire NBA is going to be there on Saturday, too, from what I'm understanding. Uh, that thing's going to be um, – it, it's going to be completely off the charts. 38-34? All right. Guys, thank you so much for the week. You guys are spectacular, man. I can't wait for next week. We got a bunch of people showing up next week, too. Um, Phil Sims is going to step in with us. Tony Dungy's going to come back on with us, too, next week. We're looking forward – to coach Dungy. So a whole bunch of people coming up here next week too. So thank you very much. Have a great football weekend. Have a great Friday night. God bless each and every single one of you. Xander. Thank you. Big Joe. Thank you very much. Tone killing it, man. And couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. God bless you too. Three to six on Monday and do this. We will catch you on the flip side. and Hooters, the perfect pair.